They say credit belongs to the man in the arena who spends himself in a worthy cause. The glory is reserved for the few right the eyes. who no matter what it's an answer the call to enter the arena. It echoes out, reverberating across the globe. It only acts to reach the bold, never the timid. The call delivers victory to the deserving and rewards the devoted. For when your time comes, there is only one option. Enter the arena. No, 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 no. Fight for the call. For Chicago, as it all comes down to formal and envoy, it's going to take a lot of work. It's going to take a lot of work. Formal falls, and it all comes down to envoy and Minnesota Rocker in their debut. 3-0 Optic Chicago. Let's go, baby. 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 If you're an Optic fan, you may have woken up and opened Twitter to this tweet from Skump. This is our Astro Social soundboard. And Skump has said, unacceptable series from us. We go again Sunday. GG's Minnesota hashtag Greenwall. Well, I can tell you one thing. Yesterday, that Greenwall was smashed by a ginormous sledgehammer from Minnesota Rocker uh, to take that series 3-0. and Welcome, friends, to the CDL HQ presented by USAA. And yesterday ended with an absolute bang. Um, and probably one that I don't think many people were expecting. Minnesota Rocker showed up. They showed up with their new asset in town. And boy, did they look good. But nameless, Chicago. If you were there right now and you were waking up in Chicago, what in the world do you make of what happened last night against the Rockers? Well, I mean, I think you wake up, you're hoping that it was a nightmare. After you stretch, wipe the crust out of your eyes, reality sets in, you realize that your team is not a contender as it stands. There's a 0% chance that they would beat FaZe in a series and that they have a lot of work to do. Throughout this series, there were so many mistakes and the hard point, they only had initial maybe one or two times. They got broke multiple times as well. It was just an absolute terrible game throughout the entire first map. And then following the rest of the series, this is a team that is supposed to be amazing at respawn, amazing at hardpoint. And we saw during the first major in the playoffs that their map pool wasn't as deep as we thought it was. And now we're seeing more errors on the side about the gaming. They have a lot of work to do. This is a team that can win, but they still have to go back to the drawing board and fix all these mistakes. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Nameless. Good morning, Chicago. Good morning, everybody from uh, from all of you guys watching on YouTube right now. But I tell you what, though, Minnesota Rocker, uh, if you are in Minnesota, I bet you slept good because Sat Standy, he brought, really did bring that plush memory foam mattress for you guys to sleep on last night. He uh, he really set you guys up for success there. An unbelievable performance out of Standy for his debut. In fact, so good that he actually made the record in the past two years of the Call of Duty League history top performance wow. from a rookie 1.52 kd on the board there and i was really impressed with what he was able to do and that comes hand in hand with a lot of the rest of his team too because priester for me as well being an ar is a great move there he looked unbelievable yesterday and that really did aid in standing and attached to have the best impact they possibly could on the game but you know overall rocker looked really sharp and on the same page and really this team kind of looked like they've been playing together for months with the performance that they brought to Optics. So unbelievable stuff. And right now, I think it's about maintenance, about continuing that momentum forward and seeing what they can really do in the long run. Um, or whether or not this was just a fluke three, no, I doubt it. It was against Optic, so let's just be honest there. Uh, talking about runs here, we're hoping for LA Thieves to have a pretty good run with uh, a new addition on their team right now. They brought on Venom, they've taken out Temp. Uh, this is going to be quite a questionable move. Is this the right choice for them? Because the past, they've done pretty well. 4-0 from past experiences in the game. 
come back into uh, the next stage of the Call of Duty League, and this is their Not match good. record nameless. That drop off no, is huge. huge. I mean, that's a testament to teams catching up and getting better. You look at the league as a whole. A lot of these teams are picking up young and up and coming talent. They're getting better, even down to all the way at the bottom of the ranks. You look at Royal Ravens, they pick up Paul X and win their first game. So it's like adapt or die. And for LA Thieves, they decided to pick up. They decide to pick up Venom, a player who's been fantastic in the Challenger scene, winning a few Challengers Cups. He is that dirty work player that just gets it done, right? He's in your face, he runs an SMG, and they're hoping that he changes the dynamic of this team. Now, the question for me will be who ends up running the flex, Ken or TJ? Which player will step up to the mantle? I know that they're going to be testing both of them out, uh, but looking at this team, man, I think taking temp out was the right play. He was towards the bottom in nearly all the stat categories, and bringing in Venom, is, it should be exciting. Yeah, I think it really should. And, and you know, for me, I think obviously bringing a new player in, bringing a rookie in that you really want him to feel comfortable and solidified in a role, you know, you have to move things yep. around a little bit. And I would love to see TJ on a flex. I'd love to see Kenny continuing that sub role. I'm not sure what is going to happen today. We will be finding out very shortly. But I just felt like Kenny was really himself again with that sub in his hand. And I think TJ can do a good job at being the flex. We'll see what happens and what unfolds. But Thieves, you know, really trying to break that top four spot amongst many other teams who really want that as well. Um, but for them, I think consistency is key right now. Build upon what you've got. And let's see what your rookie can do. I think uh, let him fly. Let's see what he's got. Uh, but I'll tell you what, another team we need to discuss is the team that is going to be facing Thieves uh, later today, and that is, that's London. Uh, London, what an incredible performance out of them as well. They bring on a rookie. Paul X had a phenomenal debut again. We didn't think it could get any better, uh, but each rookie that comes on board just does a little bit better great. than the last one. Um, very, very impressive. And uh, Paul X, nameless, do you think he is this uh, this potential for the London Royal Ravens that will hopefully elevate them to some of the, uh, the mid to top range of our CDL team Yeah, I mean, look at it. Paul X, he was the guy that was supposed to be next up for a while now. In London, they have had a really rough start to the season. It's been really tough for them to put it together. They've had so many issues, and I really feel for this squad. But finally, they bring in Paul X, and they win their first game. And Paul X, on, in this match, he had the least engagements across the board for his squad, but he had the most damage. So to me, he's doing his job. He's putting down the shots. He's you know, tagging people up for Dylan and Zed to push up and get in their face and opening up the map. And that's exactly what Paul X is supposed to do for this team. So right now, Royal Ravens, I mean, they got to ride this momentum. They got their first win. And, you know, with Paul X, it's giving them a new look. He's the AR that they needed. Absolutely is. And you know what? London have got to be feeling pretty confident coming off their first win. They beat an LAG team who caused some big yeah, upsets yeah. in the major. And really, we've routinely said LAG are a strong roster. Uh, so with that in mind, I'm sure that they're going to be going from strength to strength. Their confidence is building up. So is their momentum. But I think continue that forward. But make sure, you know, be confident, but don't become complacent. Because that's where issues can start happening and adapting. So I, I'm, I'm expecting big things out of our UK team here. I'll tell you what, though, big things to come. Because we need to show you the schedule for the remainder of this week. We've got plenty coming your way. We're going to take a look right now at our US Army schedule today. We've got the Ravens taking on Thieves right at the start. We'll see exactly who stacks up to the bill here. Is it going to be Ravens? Is it going to be LA Thieves? We'll have to find out about the rookies coming up very shortly. Our T-Mobile 5G weekly drop game. We've got New York Subliners taking on LAG. That's going to be a big one. I think a lot of people will have differing opinions on that game. And we want to know from you guys. Make sure you uh, check out our socials here. Uh, but we do have the remainder of the weekend to get through. We have three match per day. We got our first up things on Saturday. Subliners versus London Royal Ravens. We got FaZe for our Game Fuel Marquee match taking on LA Thieves. We got Ultra taking on LAG to finish off our Saturday. Sunday, Harris versus Seattle. We got Dallas taking on Rocker after that. And our Game Fuel Marquee match to round up our week is going to be up versus Mutineers. Redemption to be had, hopefully, for the Optic boys to see exactly what they can do against the Mutineers. But we do have a little treat for you guys this week. And all it is is a text. You have to text Timo Zuma to 313131 to either get a one on one coaching session with Zuma himself or a virtual private cooking session with the Italian stallion himself. I mean, come on, guys. Maybe you want to learn how best to flank on raids or how best to perfectly sear a flank steak. It's up to you guys. So, again, if you want to fry with Zuma in Cold War in the kitchen, text Timo Zuma to 313131. And thanks again to T Mobile for bringing Zuma back. Yell fan. There's a big match coming up, folks. We've got Ravens versus Thieves. It's the battle of the rookies. Who is going to walk away with a win? We'll let you guys figure that one out for yourselves. We'll see you right after this.
Call of Duty League is presented by T-Mobile, now America's largest and fastest 5G network. Set your sights on the competition with T-Mobile, the leader in 5G. SCUF, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. The Call of Duty League is presented by USAA Insurance, auto, renters and home insurance that's made to help the military community protect what they've worked hard for. Ladies and gentlemen, hello. We are back here in the Call of Duty League. We're going to dive straight into the social soundboard presented by Astro. And would you look at this? Love is truly in the air as Paul and Venom, former teammates. We finally did it. See you in the match, brothers, says Venom. Chance, we need a little bit of a, a bit of context here. For those at home who don't know, of course, Paul X is of the Ravens now. He's brought them some success in their first matchup. And Venom, we will see him debut in this very matchup for the LA Thieves. But bro, give me a little bit of background to, uh, to Paul and Venom's, you know, seemingly fresh romance. Well, I think these guys, like everybody knows, they team together on Wester and they had quite a bit of success together, but it goes deeper than that. Like Venom specifically popped up towards the tail end of World War II, and your S&D tournaments starting to work your way up through the teammates. And one of the first guys where he really started to find success was with Paul X and Black Ops 4. And it's the coolest thing, man. You got your teammates, you're working your way up through the amateur scene. And when they finally make it, they end up making it together. And for Venom's first match, he gets to play against one of his boys, which frankly, I mean, just for uh, smack talk purposes, you got to make sure you get that win. If you lose <laughs> in your first match to one of the guys you played with, you will never hear the end of it from that guy. So really for both of them, that is the importance of this match just for smack talk reasons. We love it. If, if, if that above all else, we love it. Well, we're as excited as you are, friends, to get into this game. So without too much flapping of these gums, let's put our hands together and welcome our first team, the London Royal Ravens. Once he gets up top, and frankly, he has no intention of slowing down, over the angles once again. The Raven wins a big one from across the pond. The London Royal Ravens will be the second time we've seen them play so far in the league with Paul X. And I think, I, I believe I'm 100% correct in these stats, but I think they're 1-0 so far. Chance, is that correct? Uh, that is correct. They got the 3-0 the over Los Angeles Gorillas last time. Over. <laughs> Just like last week when they played them. And I think more importantly for this team, they got a search and destroy win as well. Uh, obviously one of the biggest focus points for the squad. So all X and Z men might have a, a little bit of the magic that the team needs. Well, we'll see how they go. Again, of course, I am joking. They're not actually 1-0, but Paul said it last week when they picked up, the, well, this week when they picked up the victory. They were like, we're 1-0 now. We're going to put the previous record behind us. And, uh, well, things are looking good so far. But can they continue to find the pace against their next opponents? They've taken down one side of the Los Angeles part of the CDL. Can they take down the other? Ladies and gentlemen, the LA Thieves. Shout for the kill, the breeze cut freeze up, straight shot for the kill, the talking. Taking over pieces and shares of all the sky high, check the movement is here. Yeah, yeah. it's one hard one shot, now the future is yours, go! Yeah, it's one hard one shot, now the future is yours, go! The LA Thieves now with a brand new look for the roster. We welcome Venom to the Call of Duty League. Kenny, TJ and Slasher being the core of the squad remaining over. But we welcome Carlos Hernandez into the league and we'll see what he can bring chance. All the rookies have had, I want to say, memorable debuts. Everyone's had a good run of things. We saw Paul last week. We saw amazing stuff out of Standy yesterday. I mean, everyone's having their swing of things. Insight when you go back. These newcomers to the league all looking fine. Will Venom be the same? 
I mean, that, that is a great question because I will say this is a tough team, I would say, to try to be the, the shining light on because everyone is, it's just a stacked roster. Everyone is talented and it's not like Thieves were like super down in the dumps, unable to get wins and that's why they're making the change. They're making the change because they want to win. Like they were already one of the stronger teams in the league and they're looking for Venom to be sort of that guy to help put them over the edge. They couldn't quite attain that gold. That's what they're going to be going for. And we get to see the kid and how he can play and see what kind of performances he can bring. And I think more importantly, see how he melds with the team, see how his communication is, uh, and see if they can smooth out some of the issues that they've had. If they can do that, the kid we know is talented. We just got to see where the team can make it land. Let's see what they have to do to bring home that victory. Now, let's take a quick look at our game field keys to victory. We will be touching upon LA Thieves first. Chops, you brought up the point there, man. We've got a whole new player in the roster. What do the Thieves need to do? I mean, again, the communication is the focus point in my mind. Even from some of the Astro Gaming listen-ins we've had in the team, there are moments when it's great, it's professional, it is calm, it's exactly what you want. And then there's moments where it's chaotic. And in my mind, there is no way every player on the team can understand what was going on from every point of view. So many different people shot calling. So I'm looking for Venom just to be that calm voice, just feed out the information he has and let his teammates do the shot calling. And as long as their communication is on point, I think for the Thieves, what? It's really just these clutch moments that they've had issues with. It's the getting reverse sweep by New York. It's closing out the final moments of the hard point. It's these small little tweaks that if they can adjust in those moments, they're going to be on fire. Well, mate, uh, you just finished your point. Now we're straight into the London Royal Ravens game fuel keys to victory. You said play, feed off the plays from Zed. A 1.5D in the win versus LAG first. Yeah, and just to go to the second one for the Keep the Rhythm going in S&D, they were at the bottom of the league in Search and Destroy. Since they've made these roster changes, well, they at least beat Gorilla, so they got to let that ride. But to touch on Zed, I'm actually stealing this from something Parasite was talking about on the podcast. Obviously, Parasite teamed with this team very briefly, but one thing he mentioned was how good of a teammate Zed actually is. Like Miles. We play league play. Occasionally you get those teammates that they're just somewhere where you don't know what's going on. They screw up the timings and it's just confusing. Zed has that play style, but what he brings to the table is he's feeding you information constantly. He's making these adjustments on the map, forcing different things to happen and setting his teammates up constantly with the information. He's doing it in respawn. He's doing it in search. So you got to keep feeding off those plays. And I'd say, well, Dylan is the player I'm looking at to have the most success now that Zed is that sub duo. Yeah, this is going to be an absolute war for the Sun Machine Guns going into this series. But we will see now what the series will look like. We've done our keys. Let's have a quick look at our maps and most charts. I cannot wait to see exactly where we're going. Starting this one off on Checkmate. We're going to be going to Raid after that. Then we're going to rebound, boomerang, if you will, back into Checkmate, Moscow and Miami to close things out. We did see Express get banned there from LA Thieves, so we won't be going there. LA Thieves also got rid of Apocalypse as well, so not a DLC map uh, if, if ever I've seen one. Not a DLC team either, Chance, by the looks of things. Well, I mean, we'll certainly get to look, but just to take it a, a little bit deeper in the series, should we get there? Obviously, the Moscow, the Thieves love playing on that map, but again, it is one where they've had uh, some failures towards the very final moments of the game. Even to take that further for London, well, Miami, might be a great map for him. That's the SMD map they won first time with Paul X. I think he dropped a 2.0 KD while it was happening. And even Zed was the playmaker on it. So a couple fresh looks at the front half, but the back half have a, a bit more intel as to what's going on. Quick scope now brought to you by Scuff. And again, this tells a very, very different story to what we may expect from this series based on the stats so far. Of course, LA Thieves winning across the board there. I mean, Ravens have only managed to get one big series win so far again with the addition of Paul looking to find a few more. But this obviously tells a very different tale chance. I mean, this is a squad for the Ravens who have been struggling more than anything. But back over to the social soundboard powered by Astro and his temp, the former player of the LA Thieves, says best of luck to the team. Wish it could have went better. And I think we all feel the same way for temp. He's obviously an electric player one of the most exciting players to watch in the league i mean i'm i'm a lifelong fan of donny temp always will be but something just did not work with that squad same can be said for a lot of these players when we see team changes happen i mean it just doesn't work out i mean on paper it might sound great but when you actually manage to get it into the pixels it ain't quite the same we are almost ready to get into this one friends la thieves going up against the london royal ravens this uh should be Honestly, Charles, I think a very exciting series. There's a lot of eyes on this one. Again, it's the battle of the rookies. It's Paul X versus Venom. It's, it's friends turned frenemies into this one. The vibes are at an all-time high, I think, for London. I, I got a piece of advice from Shane. I said, Shane, what do you guys like to do before matches? And he says that basically everyone in the squad just says to each other, don't be 
So that's the best piece of advice we could possibly be giving any of these players. And uh, if they can keep up to that chance, I mean, who knows, mate? The sky's the limit. I mean, honestly, you know, some of the best coaching advice I think I've heard, that is something I'm sure teams will take notes on and make those adjustments, but uh, could not be said any better. Frankly, for the Ravens team, I know they sort of joked about it before. I really hope when we start going to listen-ins that Paul X just starts speaking with the British accent. <laughs> just throw one into the mix, try to meld yourself within the team. It might be annoying for them, but I don't know. Personally, I think it'd be hilarious in the best way to get the vibes flowing, you know? Yeah, absolutely, man. Thieves already getting ready to get this one underway. Everyone looks pumped. We've seen the fist bumps come out. We will be starting this game in a matter of moments. Ladies and gentlemen, second week of this major it's about to get going. And we're going to start this one off on Checkmate. And again, for those of you just joining us, it's the first match of the day. We've got two today. We'll, of course, be seeing NYSL play LAG later on. But until then, we'll be treated to the London Royal Ravens going up against the Los Angeles Thieves. And this chance should be a fun one. Fun one indeed. I mean, again, you get everything you want. I mean, two fresh looks for a team, right? You make the roster change on the Ravens, but they immediately kick off with some success. And this is the one of the better teams to find the opportunity to prove that you're much better in the standings than the league that you're going to show. Get some CDL points. Nice little win under your belt. And of course, Paul X. Rip, well, he's got a street while everyone else working their way towards the hard point. Here we go, straight into the hard point. We talked about Zed's communication, the way he plays, how valuable his intel he passes onwards to his squad is. Let's see if I'll find a bit more here. This early contest, quite typical, as you'll see here on Checkmate again. Easy to not let anyone get that point. Venom, you see him backed up towards the end of the plane. It's going to be a nice opening start here for the Ravens. Those crucial kills. Get those players off the point. Zed finds another one. And we've just stayed on the man Zed for quite some time. And he's done a great bit of work to allow this early 20 seconds to go the way of London. Respectable stuff. This is pretty much what you want. If you're starting off on the bad side, it is make sure you can test the hill time. And if you ever get the opportunity to flip, well, you certainly take it. That's what they're looking for now. Dylan trying to apply that pressure from the back of the plane. And maybe just the movement, the finesse. He's able to take down DJ. And you see London, they're starting to work their way up the map. And Dylan again on a tear. Whoa. Finding quite a few of these kills. Man is on a four spree. Four spree, four in a row. He's going to run across Slasher now. And the Diamathy won't do him much good there. But we're seeing London now encroach on the hard point. Thieves at the back, gonna spread out, try to hold this defensive position. It's a great throw from TJ, but not enough to get Dylan there. So you've still got two members of the Ravens far forward. Two more hit the hard point. The trades are working out, and Dylan's on a six spree. The man has not slowed down. Here comes number seven. Not a problem. Shawnee's gonna get it done, and the Ravens have started this map off with a flurry of activity. And I'm telling you, man, that teamwork with Zed was crucial. It was a couple hero plays by himself, but once they got around NASA, Zed was just the man to be next to Dylan and put this man in good positions. You see, though, he's thinking about the score streaks. They never quite was able to solidify those back spawns. And he knows he just wants to bait out his teammates. Hear that artillery, potentially the crews. He'll be good long term. And if you're going to play this heavy for the kills, you got to be sure that you get them. It's been a great start from London off the rip. I would love to have a quick listen in with the LA Thieves and see how they're doing. So without further ado, it's time for an Astro Gaming listen in with Los Angeles Thieves. I'm absolutely well, left. Give me back right, back right, back right, back right, back right, right, back right, 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 I'm probably too. No, there's steps. No, there's plenty steps. Dead. And I'm me. All right, all right. Top lane, bro. Little right, Shawnee, dead. Two top lane. Two top lane. Yep. I spawn back P2. I'm right wing. I spawn back P2. All right. Careful. Wait, we don't bottom lane. Let go. 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 Let Top right, top right, right, in plane, Pollux, watch out. Need to be a smith. Yeah. I don't see him peeking. No, I'm gonna wrap up. Low, low, right, low, right, low, 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 well, there we go, Chance. LA Thieves comms. We heard uh, one of the keywords that stuck out to me was, okay, guys, relax there from Slasher. Relax. I mean, it's pretty good, right? You get a little bit of that, and I think even the, the small talk pretty on point. People calling out nades, trophy locations, every little detail. I think maybe one thing we didn't really hear is, like, the overall game plan. Here's where we're going to break from, this and that. But, hey, if the team's well practiced, they know what's going on anyway. You're going to be setting yourself up for a nice little comeback, as you see Thieves only down by 30. 
have all the hill control in the world. Yeah, Ravens have yet to find anything since that last hard point. Still thieves in control. 25 seconds remaining on this one here by the alleyway. Dylan trying to make his approach. Entry kill on point. Can't get it. There was TJ on the corner. Nice bit of teamwork comes through. Over to Zed now underneath the plane. Trying to find these angles. But again, for now, this has been a fantastic hold from LA Thieves. They have managed to pull this game back after what was a slow start. As we rotate over now towards that far south side of the map. This is an open point. Get them trophies down. And we've got London in position early on, Chance. Here comes the break from the Thieves. In London, honestly, the, the pressure's kind of on. They're trying to hold this hill from the front. Shawnee right now just completely by himself in the hill. And, well, obviously, you see Thieves getting the split spawns as well. If the players in the back die, that would be Venom and Slasher. If they fall, London might start to run away with the game, but the kills come through for Thieves. They take their time. They get the pinch. And more importantly, the young man, he might be 4-11, but playing his life in that moment was crucial. Job well done. Here we go. We're still on board with Venom at the back line. Bags and a Shawnee just trying to hold this position down. It's a nice big first win, Zed, with the immediate trade. Here comes the push from London. Two players through the plane side, and that's a big kill from Zed on the back. So, through the computers they go. Is the contest. LA Thieves have to flush Zed off the point. Here come the remaining members of London. And on the other side of this box, it is going to be Dylan. And Dylan still keeping this run going. 16 and 9 overall for him. London with a late flip. Not really a huge amount of hard point time to be grabbed. You're going to see Thieves the top control of the map. They've got plane. They're looking fantastic as they go in towards the next set of rotations. We've had a, a full sweep. And so far, it's a very close hard point game as we now go into our next set. The contest is up. Kenny now making his approach. EJ from the rear as well. It looks like a clean break from the Thieves. And that is exactly what it is what it is and just good timing on the flank again he's talking about the communication needs to be on point you see as soon as kenny's working his way in towards the actual hill well that's when tj's going on the flank so teamwork on point gun skill maybe there as well looks like thieves actually going to get wiped out but good news for them they still have the spawns and well contest time is all they need tj though maybe Ooh. getting pressured out paul x hunting him down Frankly, for London Royal Ravens, well, this has been one of the hills where they've had the most success, but you see the pinch again, and he going on the flank, even with the ARs inside the hill. Once again, wiping him out, setting yourself up for new. Paying down 15, this is an opportunity for the Thieves. Try to run away with that score. You get this set up for new, you get the pressure on the hills where you want it. You see all those ARs locking down the Tetris side of things, but Paul X finds oh. his way through. Slasher caught with his pants down. TJ gets the gunny, and Paul X by himself walks in, takes the hill from him, and trying to run up that lead. There's only one player left now for LA Thieves in the back line. It is going to be the newcomer Venom. Shawnee's eyes on. Tags are there. Will it be Paul to get the kill? Nah, Shawnee's going to clean it up. So that's the back safe now. You have to turn eyes to the front. Shawnee now trophy in position. TJ's trying to be the one to lead the charge. Slasher now backing him up. And Slasher, he and TJ find their kills on the left side of the map. So that's an open lane to work with now. London still spawning deep in the top side of the map. Deep in the corners to the left of Paul. Here comes the push once again. It's on a Paul in the hard point. Can't quite find a tag. Thieves winding up now for the big hit. Can they get the break done clean? No, Dylan makes his charge forward. Dylan finds one, Dylan finds two, and three. The last player left on the point was TJ, and Shawnee's going to cut him down as well. A good hold from London. Thieves just took a little too long to get on the point. And not only was Paul X just the, the hero being able to walk through the hill and get that break, but the spot Zed was playing in the back corner of the map, he stayed alive for 15, 20, 25 seconds. And again, he is just feeding the information, telling his teammates where to look. And well, you tell Dylan where to find the kills, you know he's going to go find all of them. Nice success right now for the Ravens and Shawnee on point as well. It's two piece from him. You see the, the scrappy fight for this P3 hill just back and forth. ARs in the feed everywhere. Everywhere, man. It's wild stuff. Still, London have a bit of a lead going into this next one. We're going to see LA Thieves getting the final 30 seconds potentially. Not an easy hard point once again to grab and hold. You've been in league play. You've been on checkmate. You know you get shot from everywhere. But again, good comms all round. LA Thieves managed to get a chunk of that just before dipping out. Now over to the Ravens. Trying to make the rotation. Kenny's in point. Nice shots from Kenny. The two-piece comes his way. The shots are on, but the team look there from London will finally seal it out. DJ now down low. We've got a bit of control once again. And Charles, we saw this before. This is that third hard point. Going into this one, or sorry, fourth. This is exactly where we see Thieves win those rotations. They get a decent chunk, and it comes to a late break from London. Will we see the same here again? He is right now in control of the hill, which is nice. But of course, with their down by this much, a good hill here isn't quite good enough. They're going to want to flip these spawns as well. That's why you see a player like Shawnee just anchoring Ooh. so hard on the back end. But the kills go their way. The break is through, and it is perfect at that. Clean four down, spawn trap accomplished. 
Frankly, for Ravens, they're going to have to drop the ball pretty massively to end up losing this game. And Zed, well, he knows it. Plays his life up in the top of the plane, buying his teammates so much time. Oh, that's huge. Stay alive. Rechallenging now. TJ's going to get the better of him. All wins one on the point there with the Craig. Nice bit of work, though. The Thieves do manage to catch the break. Clear out their player in top plane, and now they're going to force these players back into the side of their spawn. They know full well they're going to be there. Venom going to lead the front line. Slasher making his charge. TJ's got the flank covered. This could be a great pinch here from the Thieves. The kills are in. The spawn flip is through, but oh boy, it's a messy one. And will it work out in the end? Because it looks like London have managed to get themselves back on point. Thieves have flipped out again, Chance. It is absolute pandemonium in the spawns. Yeah, pandemonium, but you can see right now the full, complete lockdown setup from the Ravens. You get Zed watching the full flank, and well, that's where the Thieves are going to be pushing through. You try to go to top plane control. There was just no presence on the rotation from the Thieves to get anywhere near this new hard point. Frankly, well, we know how good of a money hill it can be. Ravens, they're just setting themselves up to try and win this game right here, right now. If you can get it done, do what Venom's got to say about it. Finds the first. A couple of teammates now trying to make their way forward. Shots in from Dylan at the back line. Kenny wins the one up the stairs. Now on a pull. Watching the flank. He going up against his old teammate. Toe to toe. Kenny gets some shots in as well. A lot of damage dealt, but not quite enough to slow the push. You still, you managed to get Thieves on the point for a brief few moments. They won't be able to win it here. That's on the Ravens. A break is good. Some time is sweet. But they have to think of the rotation as well. Zed, 27 and 20 overall. Playing his heart out. And again, Chance, final 10 seconds here will likely go the way of the Ravens, but we got back to the top plane for the third and final time in this map. London, they need less than 10 now for the win. Here we go. Less than 10 for the win, and this is a hill that they have been strong on. Thieves are going to be in first, and it doesn't look like any pinches right now for the Ravens going to be set up. It is just Dylan working the wing and his teammates working the back, and you see the nades keeping him at bay. He's forced to back down, and again, no flanks coming through. They might just be set up for this contest time and Venom inside the point on a four spree. Man's taking a long time to heat up, but this is the best time for him to get the job done. Oh, here we go. Venom trying to get on it. Hold him back. Kenny and Slasher find their kills as well. Venom gets his done. That's a five spree. Starting to turn this one around. Better late than never. No, Dylan lands it. He finds the kills. TJ manages to flush him out in the final seconds. And we still have the LA Thieves in control of the hard point. This is not over yet, Chance. London have just got a tiny bit of a run to make. And TJ, he lands a couple of shots. Kenny's going to be there for the trades. This game is not over. 2.30 now. And Shawnee and Dylan, they break through the back lines of the plane. Venom manages to stay alive and keep the contest going. Oh my word. TJ lands the kill. Zed's on the point now as well. Eyes on the rotation. The game is not over just yet. LA Thieves could possibly steal this in the dying moments if they can hold this hard point. London, you've got to make the break now. You're about to see the lead change. Kenny manages to stay alive. Charles, what are we watching here? Five seconds for the win now. LA Thieves, they're going to hold the line. Venom with the shots. The contest is there. Oh, they finally managed to land the kills. They get the players off and the LA Thieves clutch up. What a start to the series. I can't believe it. I I can't I believe it. They did it. I mean, they at London absolutely bottled that game. They threw it away. They had 18 and a half different opportunities to get the job done. It was what, the, the third to last hill, the, the P5 after the second set of rotations. Ravens could have closed it out on that hill. They had the full setup. They had the spawns. They had the map control, everything they want. Thieves found a way to make that scrappy. Then for the Ravens, you have the opportunity on P1. Take your time, go for a route, try to flip spawn. You don't need to win the game on this P1 hill. They tried to force it through repeatedly. Not only did you have Kenny going off the entire game, with 6,700 damage, but even Venom, the young man on the squad, started out slow, but in the plane towards the end, goes on a, a five spree, I think it was, respawns, gets more kills. Thieves, that is as clutch as it could possibly be. And again, those are the moments that team has struggled with. When it comes down to the wire, they have not had a ton of success. That is the best possible situation for them to make that comeback on map. Right we do have a replay a lot, and a, 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 the last 20 seconds of that game because you're right, Chance, I mean, London had it. They had 18 different opportunities maybe to break the break to maybe get it done, but they trickled into the hard point one by one, one at a time. And already, you're looking at that mini map on the other side. You've got LA Thieves in full control. You've got them on the next hard point. Mate, these final few moments, props to Venom for holding that left line. I mean, he started out, what, like 4-11, 4-12, and, 11, four and 12, oh, yeah, something yeah. along those lines. So triple negative at a point to turn that around and go nearly even. So it definitely had a nice turnaround, but really it was 45, 50 seconds before this that, again, Ravens, you had options. Either try to rotate around, take your time to set up a flank just to flip those spawns for new or to even pinch the hill. 
They could have done a lot of different things. Unfortunately, well, they didn't. Thieves picked them apart in the slaying category towards the end. Again, as far as wind in your sails go, well, now Thieves, they have all the momentum. And more importantly, probably got Venom just a little bit more comfortable. Getting more comfortable and make sure he's feeling good as we now roll into our next match of the series. Search and Destroy on Raid coming up. But first, we're going to throw this to a very quick commercial break. Don't go anywhere, friends. We've got plenty more Call of Duty coming your way. First series of the day, far from over. See you after the break. Call of Duty League is presented by T-Mobile, now America's largest and fastest 5G network. Set your sights on the competition with T-Mobile, the leader in 5G. In a one versus one situation to keep his team alive, and is he gonna jump the bomb? Diamond Khan lands the shots at NYSL. They will complete the reverse sweep. Oh, bro. Oh, <clears throat> Absolute chaos there in the comms. What a series that truly was. We take a little bit of a look back at Tim over this season and his overall KDs there. Chance, uh, we again, chances of us seeing him again in the CDL, I think pretty high, my friend. I would absolutely say pretty uh, high. I mean, maybe the KDs don't reflect it, but again, SMG player, at least at times, another mix and match with the flex, but stats don't always tell the full story. Everyone knows, and frankly, I think from a lot of coaches that Temp has had in the past, yes, he's a, a very motivated player, let's say, but every coach that I've ever heard talk about him talk about how smart of a player he actually is, so hopefully we get to see Temp later on, but of course, some modes for this series. We go to a raid s &D next. I think one of the talking points we had, Miles, as well, the communication from Thieves, they got to fix it up for those clutch moments. Well, they did so in map number one. Map number two on Raid, one in three record overall for the Thieves. This is what they're looking to improve upon. See if Venom can fulfill his slot in this team. I think that's a lot of the conversation we'll be having about, you know, this is, this is the kind of player that LA Thieves need for Search and Destroy. Someone that's willing to just make a play, make something big happen, and then you allow the rest of the squad, the old vets, basically play those situations out in a calm and sensible way you know they know exactly what to do in these moments they know how to make the right calls but it's those openings it's those wild starting moves that's what you're looking to see now coming out of the la thieves and we'll see if venom's got it mate i'm very excited to get into this one off to raid we go home of the la thieves they're in the hollywood hills somewhere i mean i can only guess that i'd love to see those paintings change like little portraits of like slasher and stuff like the one in garage there like get rid of the guy playing the saxophone and just like i don't know get Get nade shot on the wall there. That'd be quite fun. This is the trophy room, maybe. I don't know. I'm getting carried away now. But here we go, mate. End of the search. Venom, he is looking towards mid with a slow push in towards B. And there's two members over towards the A-bomb site. And London are getting a little antsy. And it's Dylan. It's Dylan. It's first blood Dylan. Nades up, looking for the second. And a nice aggressive start here from London. Yeah, London just taking complete and utter map control. They've left over laundry side completely. But mid-map well in their possession. Bedroom well in their possession. Now, of course, for 
Ravens, they can just afford to let this bomb play and go down for free and just trust themselves in the 4v3 retake. Kenny may be able to spot a little bit of information, but this is not a fun spot to be in. You know that even if you plant the bomb, you're not in a good spot, and Ravens starting to make decisions, starting to work that flank. For Thieves, I mean, they're just taking a lot of time off this clock. You got Slasher shooting at Ghosts. Not a fun spot for the Thieves. Ravens now... Trying to make their way in towards that bomb site. There's not a lot of time left. They do have to make the play. Full X gets a lot of tags and a slash and that nature to finish it. And it does. Kenny finds one, but his teammates are getting dropped all around him. Last player left alive, Venom. He is being riddled with shots there from the three remaining members of London. They're not going to let him get out of that position alive, surely. Venom's making him work for it, though. Slip slides out. Almost takes Dylan with him. And man, there is a spot in Valhalla for that young man. Either way, <laughs> the Ravens, they take round one and a good first round to give. That honestly looked a, a little bit like Thieves just sort of lost and confused, not too sure what to do. Like, they're slowly pushing out laundry, but you can see they had zero information. They're taking their time, even though nobody was home, and by the time they try to do anything, there's not enough time on the clock. They get swarmed on sight, and, well, the first blood hang off hugely. I'd say for Dylan, who, well, starts off 3-0. and as, as much as you could ask from the young man. Can't complain. Slash really opening nades, couple of tags, a lot of information gained here from the push on towards the B-bomb site. And, and honestly, Thieves have pinched in fast as well. You can see the three members lined up through pillars. They're fully aware of this one. Shawnee managed to find a delightful little pick through the brickwork there. And DJ answers straight back. So, even Stevens, three versus three. Shawnee's still watching the flank. The bomb carrier did die there, very close to the B-bomb site. So you can see London are going to have to recover and go for the grab. All X will be the one to do that. Slash are now slowly encroaching on the flank. Two players from the front. TJ finds another lovely pick there with a the Krieg. Beautiful shots as the bomb goes down. Now it's a two versus three. Paul X and Ved now make it a 2v2. Zed, sorry. It's TJ from top art position now trying to make this work out. He and Slasher can make the move on towards the bomb. It looks like they may be able to go for the defuse, but Zed is going to repeat this. He's going to... Oh, guns up. Slasher finds it. Zed! Zed lands them both! What was that chance? How did he walk away with that win? I mean, that's ridiculous. I, I think every single player in this lobby just died without shooting back. Slasher does not connect with the bullet. TJ, I think, only shoots a bullet, even though Zed just shot. So that is uh, not a good look, I, I would say, on the trades there in the push from the Thieves. I mean, you got plenty of options all the time in the world to set up to make a play. And you just feed Zed and a well, hungry boy. He goes on a, a three streak as well. See if he can continue that, but not a good look right now for the Thieves. Again, one and three on raid. Maybe a small example as to why. Well, let's see what can happen now. Thieves back on offense. Oh boy. Dylan, he and Zed just ripped Kenny to pieces there in art. Turn him into a Jackson Pollock painting on the outside there. And now it's Slasher in the center of the ring. He's just, he has to keep a head on a swivel. Oh, nice bit of intel. Just a tag. Oh boy, Paul X though, good coverage. And TJ also back in the trace here. Once again, back and forth. No, it's a lovely peach from Dylan that's thrown over the top. 4v2 now. Ravens, aggression, mounting. TJ in a bit of trouble there. Oh, he somehow manages Ooh. to survive that fight. And Venom with the trades there. And Paul X manages to slide on through. Finally get the kills. The trades were on point for London. And TJ, shenanigans in the bushes. The boy, Ravens looking aggressive. Ah, nice little plays from Paul X towards the end as well. Just the, the cleanup crew getting both those kills towards the tail end. But right now, this is it's just Ravens picking them apart one by one. These have not really had much to offer, even when they got the, the first blood just two rounds ago. I mean, maybe a, a similar situation we saw in the hard point where Ravens get off to a strong start. Thieves end up clutching up. But right now, we're, we're waiting to see that second half tail come to fruition. You can see this idea. That is a triple oh. stack mid oh. on defense and TJ. Never going to be prepared for that. Great way to get the first blood. You got a control completely locked down. And Ravens, again, just sort of taking their time, doing whatever they want on the map. Yeah, they're going to get that bomb down easy peasy. Shawnee's going to get the plant. Quick tag slides away. You've got one player at least watching mid. And look at Paul X on the other side of the map. Just chilling, making sure no one makes their way through mid. Again, it's a joke. I know he's not AFK. He's watching the flank. Still, you've got the players now making their way on the point. Kenny, stunned up. Surely the information gets passed on. Slasher making his way forward. A big aggressive kill on the shorty. Slasher, though, he will find maybe a few more. Shots are in. And the behind, it's going to be Venom once again. 1v2 situation now. Straight onto the bomb they go. The trades weren't bad. But, man, it is squeaky clean from the Ravens here on raid.
Right, squeaky clean, and I love the homework that they were able to do as well. I, I think towards the end, it's just nice kills from Zed, but more importantly, the trades were there, but it is all about that opening break in my mind. That triple stack for the late challenge mid-map, a lot of teams like to do it. Thieves is certainly on that list. You get a player into P5, try to get that mid-map control. You get there late uh, on the, the offensive side of things, so you have to take your time, time it perfectly, get that triple challenge, get that first blood the round perfectly after that zed by the way seven and two Got himself a, a nice little game so far i'll complain at all for zed four spree right now we saw dylan's be the one starting the things off for the ravens but zed may be the one to finish it four and oh so far ej he and venom towards the backside of laundry it's another three man hit through mid for london here we go you're about to be blown wide open, Thieves. TJ on the flank once again. Venom, nice pinch. Nice work from Venom. The trades are going to be there. Polex gets involved. Shawnee now watching the back as well. It's Shawnee from Jungle Side trying to deal the damage onto the bomb carrier slasher. It's a 2v3 situation right now, but you've got London trying to take this by the scruff of the neck. The wide open B-bomb site right now for the LA Thieves should they decide to back on up and I believe the bomb carrier will. It's going to be Slasher making his way there now. DJ and Kenny just trying to watch the flank, make sure no one gets through. London, slight reposition now from Paul and Shawnee. Shot call is on. They're going to try to make the aggressive play. No pick to be had from Paul. Chance they're going to go all the way around the back. And you got the bomb planted for top laundry. You're going to have to win so many long range gunfights and just gun these players out of the power positions to have any hope of getting the defuse. And frankly, running out of time, you got to make this happen quickly. It was 30 seconds on the clock a moment ago, and now Paul's made his way behind it. Kenny, wide open. Great shots from Kenny. Good defensive hold. 20 left on the clock. Not a chance. LA Thieves. What a decision to turn back and grab the bomb, go for the plant there. A wonderful round on the board. And Venom maybe got robbed just a little bit for the best play. He was the one that picked up the two-piece with the, the bait from TJ back laundry. But uh, much better job of just being decisive, trying to get that control. He was taking advantage of the, the life advantage that they had. Perfect setup towards the end for the post plant positioning as well. Definitely more of what you expect, even though things get dicey because... I did like the, the four-man stack for back long to the Ravens <laughs> on the attempted retake. Of course, an attempt was the, the only thing that they had. Middle map control, by the way. Ooh. Thieves again with complete control. Noise made over towards B. Venom gets picked off in the bomb. Looks like it's going to go down for free. First bloods right now for the Ravens just running amok. And well, they have not been clutched on yet. They have been on point. They get that life lead. And he catches a swim in Dylan. DJ from stairs trying to push Paul back. This is an opportunity to go. Slasher finds his pick as well. This should be a good retake. It's all on Shawnee. Shawnee versus Slasher manages to win it. Kenny's got eyes on. The tags are there. Easy kills. Zed now makes his way through the bottom of the stairs. Makes the shots on the Kenny. Finds the kill. It's a 1v1. Zed all slips out with his life. DJ eyes on the stairs. Zed, can he win another big round? Runs for it, but not enough time. TJ should be able to get back with just over a second to spare. The Iceman strikes again. Great job. Oh, big, big kills from him as well. He wanted to take that gunfight. Obviously, necessary for him, Zed, just trying to run away. And frankly, uh, that's a round Ravens, I think, a look back and just trying to figure out where is Dylan swimming to? I would say is the big question. I don't know if Slasher from Dak, back Tiki was able to put some shots in, but he gets completely caught out. And for a team that's been on point with their trades, on point with the man advantage, well, a quick way to throw that away. Steve's found themselves down 4-0. Working on this comeback. The attack, that bomb going go towards B. Actually, I take that back. They doubled up. Now they're stacking over towards bedroom. They're playing for picks pretty heavy this round. Pretty heavy indeed. Surely might have caught a shoulder there. He may have seen someone. I just feel at this point, I mean, LA Thieves, they've been trained to worry about the three-man push from the Ravens. And the 2-2 two -two split is going to give you some opportunity there to maybe get the kills. But Zed? Oh, hello. That's a lot of damage. Has to back on up. Does have teammates in the middle to help him out. It's going to be Dylan. Nice nade. They are trying to catch Zed while weak, but nope, Zed will live. First blood goes the way of Paul. Over by that B-bomb site. He's going to reposition. Kenny now. Great tags on the run. Can't quite get away from it as Paul will meet his maker in this 3v3 now chance. London with a right, slight reshuffle. And keep in mind, Sasha right now is potentially to make the big play because he's got the cutoff through mid because Ravens have effectively doubled flank. There's the play from Sasha. Catches him completely left guard. And his teammates, by the way, I was going to say, talk about decisive. I think they're going to try to work themselves over towards the A site, but they are running out of time, and they are in the middle of a pinch. 
I mean, you got what? Zed and Shawnee working on opposite sides of the map, and oh, Zed able to catch oh. that bomb planter before it goes down. Catches Slasher as well. Now Kenny's oh. in between two, and he gets ripped. The instant 2v3 clutch from the Ravens, getting the job done and taking a sizable lead. As you can see, the timing perfect, and the bomb plant spot a little bit less so. You think the Thieves had an opportunity, but with the time on the clock, they couldn't get the job done. Nice little bounce back round. Two clutches in a row. And for Zed, well, you see the 10 kills he's got again. Not too shabby of a game he's having right now. Not at all. Great timing. It was a weird play there. I suppose he had, he had defenders on either side of the map, but they managed to make that pinch over towards A fantastically. Aggressive round now. Oh, boy! Oh, hello. Hello. It's an aggressive start indeed. He manages to land two members of London. Shawnee and Dylan now in a little bit of trouble. Dylan, at the very least, is going to be able to get a single kill now to make things a little bit easier for them. But TJ, eyes on the cross. Not going to let those players make it over towards the outside of the ring, over towards that B-bomb. LA Thieves fully stacked up towards Pillars. This should be a kill from TJ. Oh, nice dodge from Dylan. So with that, oh dear, now the guessing games begin. Do we stay on towards B or do London go all the way over towards A? This is going to be the shot call. Shawnee playing the rear guard. You see those players? They may decide to make the bomb go out, but look, it looks like Thieves have guessed something. Oh, Shawnee finds himself too. Oh my word. The Thieves have second guessed it. And in that, they've cost them their lives. It's a 2v1 with 30 seconds remaining chance. This could well be it. Dylan, eyes are on. Shawnee's going to surely get the tags in. TJ with the ego chow manages to land the shots. Now it's a 1v1. This is to keep the Thieves in it. And TJ, TJ, no! Can't land the shots. Dylan will close it out and it's a 6-2. The Ravens will take the series now, two to nothing. One more map's all they need. Another three. Uh, well, I think I think the Thieves might have won the first map, if I if I recall. Oh, I think sorry, they sorry, up towards I'm, the end. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm with you. It certainly feels so that it has been going that way. <laughs> I agree with it, the sentiment. It feels like Ravens have been doing whatever they want, but in fact, Thieves did clutch up at least from map number one. I will say though, I mean, I, pathetic, maybe too strong of a word, but just a, a pretty horrid performance coming out of Thieves. You open that round with a effective collateral from Kenny with the Krig Six, and you find a way to throw it away. I just, I don't know if Thieves are in their head as a team, if it's a communication thing or what's going on, but I mean, there are just so many rounds that just should not be crumbling the way they are, but Hey, I mean, if you're a London fan taking full advantage of any opportunity that these have been handing you, I suppose it's just about clutching up in those respawns and the Ravens will be good to go. Full disclosure, uh, my wife brought a sandwich into the room <laughs> towards the end of that map and I was like, thank you, 2 oh, what? No, sorry, my bad. So it's 1-1 one, one in the series. This should be... <laughs> I'm so sorry, friends. We've got a US Army tactical play coming up in just a moment. I'm having too much fun. We've got checkmate control coming up after this. But first, our US Army tactical play. And uh, yeah, man, it was, it was decisive to say the least chance. Walk us through this one. Trying to remember round two. I know it's Ravens getting the win. Oh, this was the round where every single player is just getting picked and like no one's shooting back. And this is another, by the way, 2v3, man advantage. Venom gets picked. He's not shooting back. I think Paul X falls by Slasher. Oh, yeah. Paul probably didn't shoot back. And then for Zed, again, they know he's back laundry. He had 30 seconds to work with as well before he needed to fuse the bomb. And Zed, of course, is forced to come out and check. Well, what do these players do? Well, there's a challenge. Slasher doesn't hit a bullet. TJ with the follow-up doesn't hit a bullet. Zed saying, thank you very much. I'll take the clutch. I'll take the momentum. And a nice double-digit game from him in game number two. We saw some good stuff all round from, uh, in terms of clutches in that one. That was a, that was a lot of fun to, to watch back. And it's not 2-0. It's 1-1. I'm sorry. A little bit of bias maybe slipped through there. But here we go, friends. We're going to throw this to a very quick commercial break. And then we return. It is time to go back to checkmate. It's time to go to control. And it's fine. time to find out who takes the lead in this series.
Call of Duty League is brought to you by Game Fuel. Use code CDL2021 for a special discount on GameFuel.com. Tournament audio and team listenings are powered by Astro Gaming, the official headset and mix amp of the Call of Duty League. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Call of Duty League. We're tied up 1-1 in the series, but before that, we got snapbacks, strapbacks, and knits. Get ready to rep your squad with all new CDL headgear collection available exclusively at Mitchell and Ness. Sweet lids, if ever I've seen them. I've seen some lids in my time. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you that. Got the lids on screen right there. There you go. Slash for rocking one of his very own. But here we go into our next match. Not too far away from this one. It's going to be a checkmate control. We are tied up 1-1 in the series, despite the fact that this commentator lost his damn mind in that last one. We're going to look at Venom versus Paul X, former teammates. This is from this series just today. So Venom making his debut in the CDL so far. He was absolutely crucial chance in that victory in the first checkmate hard point. But so far, you know, not too bad whatsoever. Well, I was going to say, I think really just what the stats show, obviously for Venom. It is literally only two games that he's played so far. It was just a search and destroy from the Thieves that just did not look good pretty much from start to finish. But the hard point, again, the clutch factor is the most important thing. Not sure what's going on with this Thieves team in terms of the clutch factor, comms, whatever it's going to be. They sort of seem like they're just in their heads to me. Maybe it's just a raid thing where they're now one in, feet, or one in four, excuse me. But hey, at the very least, the silver lining, you found yourselves in a hole on the checkmate hard point that you dug yourselves out of. So certainly a, a light at the end of the tunnel there and oh, fist bumps are out you know map three is loading and frankly for any of these teams you know raven's doing the ritual you know what shane wanted him to say try to get that job done <laughs> just for the bounce back you know what they're the saying show going. you know what they're saying i'm not going to say it again but i was going to ask shawnee to uh, get back on camera lad. like what's going on there everyone in the thieves looking clean looking ready to roll and now on to drop into map three we go Checkmate control. Don't see too many of these. You do in league play. But you don't see too many of these in the league. We've got a lot of, quite a broad selection of maps and everyone seems to be enjoying themselves. Again, vetoes are all done. We love seeing those on broadcast. We hope that you do as well. And into the next map we go. Excited. Team. Maybe slightly tense. A lot of the fans, and I know the LA Thieves fans have seen socials already. Eight shots even threatening a comeback. God help us all. Here we go. I believe he goes by Mr. Shot now. Mr. Shot, I like that. Well, off to the, uh, off, oh, okay, off to an explosive start. It's gonna be London, they find their first three kills. And the aggression already mounting. Dylan is well and truly in the back line, maybe a little too aggressive. Zed on the left flank, can't quite catch it either. So, LA Thieves, they answer the volley. Now back off to the push to the front line. Shawnee slows things down somewhat. Venom making his way through that blue side. Over on the right, a couple of tags. TJ's going to hopefully now be able to tickle the center of the ring, knowing full well you've got players out there. But oh, there goes the defense. Zed finds his kills. Venom answers back. And Chance, it is back and forth. Quite the rally so far between London and LA. I'll bet in London, they just need to play corners. They just had a literal perfect opening break and both SMG players just taking gunfights as quickly as possible. Slow it down just a little bit. You'll be good to go, but maybe not because once anyone from Thieves tries to get near the middle of the map, they get eviscerated straight out of it. Paul, by the way, 7-1 and one for him on a four spree and screw the corners. Play the aggression. Get all up in the mix. Well, Paul is maybe going to fall, but you can see... At least right now for the Thieves, just stuck all the way in their base. They haven't managed to get onto the contest just yet. And Zed, Zed, in from behind. This could be devastating. Pick of the Krig. Now able to find a few more. His teammates are making this look great. The clock is being burnt out. Oh, Ooh, no. Hey. Oh, Zed, sweet child of mine. The kills are there. The clock is ticking. And that 
was an incredibly decisive round from the Ravens. Uh, I will go out on a limb and say that is the fastest round of checkmate control we have seen so far this year. That is ridiculous. Uh, I, I think I said what? Hey, play some corners. Slow it down for half a second. Ravens doing the smart thing. Completely ignore my advice. They just flew at the thieves. We had Shawnee in the feed picking up kills with the AK-74U. We had Paul X in the feed and on camera picking up kills with the AK-74U. They just lived in the base uh, of the LA thieves. I mean, that was just absolutely ridiculous. That lasted, I, I, was it a minute? I think it was a minute a, and wait, wait, 20 it was, seconds. Yeah, so no one managed to land the contest, I believe. No one got on the Yeah, a minute yeah, and a no half one got on the point. Five. Yeah, that was a minute and 40 seconds. That was, was it. Insane. That was wild, man. What a, what a fast round that was. So, let's see what the Thieves can now bring on defense. Checkmate, a very, I suppose, defense, you know, favorable map. You can hit those aggressive plays quite comfortably. But you know what? Let's just go for it now. Let's have a quick Astro Gaming listen in with the London Royal Ravens. One shot, dead. One up, 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 one where are you going, Plim? I fucking mantled. Oh, that was shit. Okay. In plane, in plane, I think. In plane, I think. In plane, yeah, yeah. Please just stay, please just stay. Yeah, 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 I'm fine. Watch your mid. Top plane dead, one's under plane. No more top plane, I mean. I've been switched ball, I've been switched ball. Dead! Let's go! Let's go, man! Come on! I run this shit, baby. Keep it up! Son, I'm short! What the f? Uh, I don't, I don't really know what to say. I, this is disgusting, Chance. You, you heard the comms. Paul was more worried about the fact that he mantled on the left wing than the fact that he picked up that ridiculous string of kills we're looking at now. I mean, this is ridiculous. I, I have a rule. Anytime I'm playing on controlling this map and I see someone on defense go up top red, I'm like, oh, this is going to be free. I'm never going to lose uh, to that. Well, I saw Slasher go up there. And sure enough, if you're getting bullied out that bad, that that's the power position you're looking to take, things are uh, not going well. The entire team right now of the Ravens currently going on a spree. Frankly, streaks do not matter. They have no care in the world. Unless these have a, a strong opening break here. I mean, they are just being oh. suffocated. Oh, Paul, can we get a task manager check? Like, this guy is having a map. 13 and 2. Six, over, six in a row, and I think it's only going to get more dangerous. Eve's trying to push forward, trying to find something. You got Shawnee finding kills as well in the feed. Paul almost getting it done from the back line. Kenny's going to answer back. Nice job. Here comes Venom and TJ finding their kills, but traded out immediately. Raven's trays right now are absolutely brilliant. Nothing is getting through right now for the LA Thieves. Slash is going to make his way over towards A. A kill would help here, but Dylan's going to gun him. The trade's God. not there. The kills are still flying through. The Ravens win their ones. And with that, TJ, he is in a tough spot. A massive oh, win there against Z Chance. But oh, baby. LA Thieves are certainly struggling here against the Ravens. Zed's like, is he shooting windmills? Like, I don't even know. Like, <laughs> Zed is, has been having a phenomenal performance. TJ is gunning him, but it just doesn't make a single bit of difference. The SMGs rampaging right. Everyone, everyone from right now for the Ravens, just doing whatever they want on the map. Again, the Thieves find themselves just stuck in their spawn, which granted, it's checkmate. It's expected, but they can accomplish nothing on the map. This is shaping up to be the fastest checkmate control potentially we have had all year. I don't want to be able to get the contest. It's, it. it's done, mate. Dylan's going to finally drive these little stakes into the coffin. That is it, mate. It's done. It's over. No one has a single chance here. What an incredibly decisive 3-0 there on control. Uh, just, just roll the next one. We're way ahead of schedule, boys. We're way ahead of schedule. Let's just get into the next map. What? I cannot believe this. The Ravens have already gone. They're out. What the hell, man? What was that control? I, maybe just one player right before the map started was like, hey, I didn't go to the bathroom. I really got to go. Can we speed this thing up? I don't know. That was completely insane. And I will say, we talked about Checkmate being defense heavy. But in my mind, if a map's not purely 50-50, that just means there's somewhat of a skill gap, right? If it's difficult to win offenses, that is a puzzle to solve. You got to figure out a way to get the wins. Well, the Ravens just did that and went around on offense in what, like 45 seconds a minute. It is insane. It is a map with somewhat of a skill gap and thieves feeling the pressure. What, almost quad negative for Slasher. I mean, Kenny got three and 13. They just got bullied in the control. 
And if it were not for the massive comeback that they had in the hard point, this would have been one of the hottest 3 0s that we have had all year long. So maybe shout out to the checkmate hard point for the Thieves, keeping them alive in the series. But I'll tell you, Miles, they do not look like they are alive. That's not a happy place to be for the Thieves right now. The real test in this series is do they have the resolve or the mental acuity to pull this one back. This is going to be a tough test for them now. We're going to Moscow. We're going to the hometown, the red one. They want to beat this one big. They want to go all the way, baby. Will we see a game five or will it end right here? Let's find out after the break. Duty League, we are now coming into map number four here in this incredibly fast series. Feels like it's uh, barely begun and we're already looking at map four. LA Thieves managed to take a very crucial and exciting comeback on the Checkmate Hardpoint, but since then it has been all London. Now we go to the Moscow Hardpoint, their pick. Will they be able to turn this one around, Chance? This is going to be an essential win thus far for the LA Thieves. Looking overall at our Moscow hard points in the season, this is this season already, and LA, they look to be a lot stronger overall. And this actually cracked me up. This is about a month ago when I was looking at uh, like hill times, which teams are good at what. I literally thought the Ravens on P2, I thought there was a glitch in the system. So I hit up our stats guy and I was like, there's no way. Turns out, yeah, they're actually one of the best P2 teams in the game. And this was the Ravens team that were like never winning hard points and they are still finding that level of success on a consistent basis. Granted, a ton of roster moves have happened since then from the earlier days. So not too sure what to expect out of the Ravens here. But say for the Thieves, though, it has been a strong map for them. Even when they're losing, it is tight games. This is not the time to find another loss. This is uh, an incredibly important moment, I would say, for this team, Miles. It's been a good map for the Thieves, but when the Thieves had a slightly different roster, who knows, though, if the core, if the DNA of the squad is still there strong enough to maintain that dominance here on Moscow. But with that being said, it may be all smiles for the Ravens, but now for the LA Thieves, it is crunch time. Time to go big, not let this series go any further. Or will London be able to add the other side of LA to that little black book of theirs? Let's find out. Miles, more importantly, is Shawnee standing up? I don't know. Is he standing? Does no. Does he stand up when he plays? That no. would be, there's, I mean, there's no way. Unless he's, maybe. Unless he's a chair. Maybe, unless he's like scooshing. Is he scooshing along the, the floor? Or if he's, oh, we'll have to ask Shane. Shane, send us a DM. Does Shawnee play standing? Is that his secret? Yeah. Is, it, is, he, is he got a standing yeah. desk? <laughs> wow. Things you learn. <laughs> Speculations here in the CDL. Answers on a postcard. In a Moscow we go. Another rainy day here in this big old red city. Moskva to the Russians. Moscow to me and ask how to some Moscow, folks. In Americans. Some, some parts of America. It's not all of them. But here we go, mate. And it's the first hard point. Right off the rip. The contests are already there. You're seeing the nades back and forth. But who will win the opening bout? And already we're seeing Venom, the LA Thieves, managed to make that push through, trying to get spawns for next. 
And I like the play from Venom too, just going on that sort of late flank wrap around to Eskies. I hate when it happens to me, but it works off there, at least for getting the Eskies clearance. But Zed has just been hanging out this entire time inside the point. He is feeling no pressure, no motivation to challenge at all. And frankly, this is just, this is a Mexican standoff in the middle of P1. Yep, you got guns on us, we got guns on you. No one's willing to make the move. Finally, someone breaks it and TJ, oh man, he was going aggro there. You do manage to get a bit of time for the LA Thieves, but London managed to win the War of the Trades. And now, on to Shawnee. This is going to be a big push. He's eyes on many players. Oh, what a nade from TJ on the Dylan now. Can he catch any of these players on the transition? Doesn't even win the gunfight in the middle. So, LA Thieves, all four members up and about trying to make the charge through mid. They're going to get a few seconds of hard point time on their way. Restock, fuel up, make the push. Paul's going to land the shots, though. The mighty Krig of Paul X rings out down that long street. Shawnee backing him up as well. And this is a nice defensive hold. London have the point now, but here comes the pinch from the Thieves. And frankly, not even just the pinch. They're actually inside the point as well. They are bullying them out. Shawnee right now trying to be the hero of the squad, but they get wiped immediately. You go from a team that, again, one of the best P2 teams in the game. Thieves, though, take full advantage. And more importantly, TJ, well, he's getting close to some streaks. He does get dropped, but hey, good news is you secured the money hill. Oh, this is the, the one attempt at an attack from the Ravens. Yep, they're going to do it through mid. Dylan, oh wow, lands it from Slasher. Th those shots were ridiculous. Dylan almost able to get the second on the Venom, but not able to have it. Rotation's already underway. London are going to spawn more in the center of the map, and it's a very long and arduous journey now for the LA Thieves to get towards that next hard point. Still, decent production there on the second, as the stats have foretold us. Shout out, Tyler. Love your work. Dylan now. Watching that push through open street. Timing is incredible. He's just let two players slip by. Oh, hello. There's one. Oh, no, I'm being shot in the back. Dylan managing to take one with him. Now over to Zed. Trying to lock down this side of the map. And again, look at the push from the Thieves' chance. Are they going to end up going through the front? No, it looks like a full hit towards the back. Ball's in the right place at the right time, but Slasher too strong. Kenny now find the kills as well. Dylan, he just about lands those two kills. And that's going to slow the push down for good. Thieves have got to now rethink this one. Oh, Dylan. Such an annoying player. Three kills in a row for him now. Massive work. The push now from the front for LA. Oh, and this is actually interesting. They might be able to get some of this scrap time. It is Shawnee basically by himself, and he gets ripped. You see the triple challenge coming through. And honestly, right now from the Thieves, I actually like that play call. Looks like he got the gunfight towards the end as well that Kenny wins. If they had tried to rotate, they would have been giving up 30 full seconds for free. Instead, they fight from the front, make a good read, and they actually are going to have the lead going into new. Admittedly, it might be somewhat of a 3v4, but actually, you see Kenny. He might be able to work the late pinch as the bullies coming out the rat room. This is very well played so far by the Thieves. Yeah, well, because you're such wonderful Call of Duty League fans, we're going to treat you to another listen-in. Let's go for it. It's time now for an Astro Gaming listen-in with the LA Thieves. I'm looking at your banks there. Right, they can be in gold. They can be in gold. I'm just so bad. Gold on me, Paul X. Watch out. Watch out, gold. Oh, there's two. I need two pillars. I need 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 pillars. Go new, go new, go new. I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Nice shit. I'm in the bus. I'm getting there, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm playing gold. I'm playing gold. I'm playing gold. Okay. I don't see him old. Might be laying down there. At least two old. At least two old. At least two old. Yo, one could be mid right now. They could go new. They could go new. Well, there was the regain listening. We're hearing the LA Thieves managed to pull this one back slightly to be had here on Moscow. Chance, what do you make of the comms? Uh, well, I mean, the comms are good, in all honesty. I, th that was one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. Oh. They just double teammated it somehow instead of trying to get the breakthrough rescue. So I do not know what just happened to the Ravens, but obviously, massive turnaround, I, I would say, from the control. Uh, somewhat of a, a weird moment, but Kenny, nice gunfight win on the back. That is setting his team up long term. And well, you see the idea from the Ravens. They want nothing to do with P1, they are working very hard for this rotation. Kenny, well, he's going to be here first. It was so long to go. Dylan, actually, he, he found a way to get through. Slip through. Let's get dropped by Kenny. Once again, Kenny, crucial kills there on point. Will be eventually traded, but still. Over to Paul X now, trying to find the top of the police department, top of PD, as we like to call it in league play. Kenny's still, or Terry, TJ's still downstairs. Nice shots from Paul. Gonna make it safe. Now, 
Penny. Over towards their second point. Nice shots. The crossfire coming through from the Ravens. They will be able to get some control here. A decent chunk of time to be had before the LA Thieves can really get in a position to start to contest this. Two players coming through the top side of the map. Two now making their way through mid. And Zed. Zed's made the read here. TJ. No way he's going to check that. And he's going to have to check it though. But Zed knows these players are coming. What a run from Zed. Nice set of kills. That's four in a row. Over, overall. Wonderful stuff. Ravens going to hold that one down. Zed's on a five spree now. Rotation's underway. And again, that is just a, a picturesque look at the, the play style of Zed, right? Pick a ratty corner, play around it, feed your teammates the information of like, look, I got the side door and the back window of laundry. Your street's open. He had the, his teammate in police watching that forum. And it's just one guy sort of orchestrating the map, making sure his teammates are on point. And now he's trying to orchestrate his teammates to get him streaks. Obviously, this is a money hill. They're more concerned right now about getting Zed the kills, and then the break is going to be free. Well, here comes the push, and the investment was worthy. Zed lands the kills. That's going to be six in a row. Slasher now watching the back end. Oh, my God, the timing. Oh, the timing. London could be in. You still have TJ watching the back as well, and here comes the comms. Slasher dips straight back out, stops the spree of Zed, charges forward, stops the run of Paul as well. Slasher, what a push that was. Magnificent comms and great teamwork from LA. The kills keep coming through, and the Ravens, though, they're not quite done yet. They're going to flood the back. Here they come, smashing their way right through the middle of the alleyway. Zed's going to find two. Zed can't get any more. It's a two-piece there from Venom. Oh, baby. It is relentless aggression from either side. The Ravens will be slayed out. They will spawn in bank, though, Chance. But the LA Thieves are certainly starting to pull away this one. Oh, absolutely. And by the way, just massive gunfight wins from Sasha, right? You shut down the streaks from Zed. You secure the, the rotation as well. And they're honestly good communication, too. They knew that Dylan was back here. Despite that, still wins the first gunfight. Still trying to finesse around this pillar. And you see Dylan just buying all the time in the world. But of course, while this oh. is going on, split spawns are coming through. He wins the one on Slasher, but his teammates don't quite have the hill clearance. You see actually Shawnee going on late flanks. These have been on point with the awareness, but they can't find the kills. And Ravens, well, they're certainly thinking about that comeback. Still, though, down by about 40 points. Miles, I'll tell you, they're working on it. They're working on it. This is not a hard, an easy hard point to get the job done on by any stretch of the imagination. Here comes the push now from the LA Thieves. They managed to clean up the players on back bus. All's going to be up next. Nice shots. Good crossfire. London find the first three kills. TJ's the last player left alive. We got, are going to see spawns there towards the back of the bank. Paul could potentially push this one out. You do already have London lined up for the next one. Paul with a far forward position, able to get tags into the players coming through from bus. So now a quick reshuffle keeps his opponents guessing. And this has been a very solid hold from the Ravens over by the boulevard. And Chance once again, back towards the center, back to the Metro. Our tickets have been punched and we're now ready for this one. See what TJ can do on the opening. These are the do or die moments as well. You see the fight hey. from D1. TJ, nice wins. He has been like never losing gunfights. He is gunning people seemingly all series. In spite of that, obviously you see the success overall not quite there, but fighting for that lead, 20 point bump for the moment. You see Shawnee right now trying to keep the spawns for his team and the pinch on P1 is there. Slasher, big gunfights for him to win. Again, just needing to stay alive towards back police. So far, so good for him, but his teammates, you see, trying to cross on the street, they are falling, and the comeback is in Ooh. just from P1, but Slasher holding it down for the moment. You see his teammates able to wrap around, so Slasher going big for the spawns, but obviously, as far as that fight for the time goes, Ravens, great job, able to tie this game up. Tying it all up. Here's a last-minute contest. Again, Thieves don't want this to go through. Doesn't want it to be any closer than it already is. TJ's there on point spot to shoot those players through the glass i'm not sure if anyone else knew that one but it's uh, it works but here we go towards the point and it's ravens they've crossed over the 200 point mark better late than never to make the push and here come thieves they're gonna make the three-man hit through the outside it's on dylan though to win that fight on the inside of the map and paul to win the fight on the inside oh there's the shots dylan goes down an open lane now to work with for the la thieves all finds his kills from top PD. Kenny now making his way over towards the point. Trying to make this as safe as he can. He just about survives. Slips through. Paul in from behind though. Raven's still on point. Raven's still holding this one down. Venom finally gets another slays. And that's going to be that chance. There you see LA Thieves flip it out for now. 20 seconds to be had on this one before the contests are there. My God. We are going down to the wire, my friend. Rotation's on. I mean, this has been one of the strangest games of Moscow Hardpoint I think I have ever seen. But either way, it continues. Basically going to be a tied-up game going into do, and you see Zed has spawned out. The question for Thieves is, I don't know how where they're going to be, if they're going to be turning, be prepared for this late flank. The fact that Zed just stood in the hill, Thieves should know they're trying to bully their way from the front. Two players flying through, but again, they are still getting flanked. Still getting flanked. Here comes Zed. 
catches a slasher. Kenny, he goes down as well. Zed's managed to get on the point. The trophy's the biggest the opportunity now to slow him down, and that's going to be enough. Can't quite even find it. The clock's still ticking. We are going to see 20 points now for the win for the London Royal Ravens. Dylan's still there on point. The attack now starting to build up from the LA Thieves. Venom in through the back line. Slash is going to win the gunfights up front, and this is it. The chance to make one clean break. Final 10 points now for the win for London. You've got to go, Venom. This is the right time to get it done. He's shooting a ghost. Five seconds for the win, but they're on the point chance. They cannot win it here. They have to hold every single moment. And for London now, surely the game plan is just to play for the next. I was going to say, just set up a trap. If they feed you the kills, maybe you could fight for those final five seconds. But you are thinking desperately about the rotation. And, well, Kenny might be the interesting player because he's got the pinch set up for new. All four players right now for Ravens are going to be in and around bank. Kenny's trying to trap him in while his teammates work on the flip side. And, again, five seconds away for one team, eight for another. It all comes down to this street hill, and Kenny's going to fall. We saw the LA Thieves make the comeback on the first map. But now London, they're going to find these kills on point. One more player drops, and it's an open hard point. Kenny has to forward TJ finally gets onto it we're gonna see five seconds now for the win for LA Thieves but the guns are up London gunning their way forward they're still in with another kill and still the contests are on point Zed manages to win a big one and with that London will finally close it out as close as you like there on Moscow it's a 3-1 overall and my word did the LA Thieves make it tight but man what a comeback it was you had a clutch performance on Moscow right there from the Ravens. If they had clutched up in map number one, it would have been a 3-0. But either way, they get the job done with the new man on the team. Paul X 2-0 with the man on the roster. Got him feeling good. And I think, honestly, one of the most interesting part of it, their S&D looked dominant. Admittedly, though, Thieves on the flip side, they just look so sloppy right now, man. That Moscow, I'm telling you, from start to finish, just completely strange on both sides of the table. Ravens happy for their win. Paul X shown out as well. 5K damage to his name and Dylan right there with him. And well, on the flip side, not a lot of love to be had. Opportunities on both sides, but Ravens get the clutch towards the end. You can see just only half the team even present on camera. Well, Shawnee at least has a chair there, so I know he's sitting down, but just <laughs> non performance, man. The, the team's trying to turn things around. They get a couple nice wins under their belt, and they are beating some teams that started out stage one very strong. Maybe you have to do some readjustments. The hype from Zed maybe a little bit too much out here, knocking the cameras over. Oh boy, what a massive victory there for the London Royal Ravens as they continue their brand new campaign here in the league with Paul X now bolstering the squad in a big way. Oh boy, 3-1. That's going to be the final score there, of course. The London Royal Ravens versus LA Thieves. We will be looking at our scuff play of the game in just a brief moment, but chance. Oh baby, I mean... It's a transformation. I'll scuff play the game now on the screen. Uh, it's going to be the final few moments by the looks of things. I mean, LA Thieves, they, they did as much as they possibly could to set themselves up for the win, but London clutched up in the end. And honestly, it was what, probably the, the nade kill on Kenny towards the end that really sort of seals the deal. But I'll say, even before this, right, we're seeing Slasher pick up two pieces to try to rotate the P2. Then I blink for a second, come back, and Ravens just break the hill seemingly for free. Like... There is so much weirdness that's going on in the game, but either way, the nade of defeat right there from Zed. You take down Kenny, the pinch is no longer that big of an issue. You get your time to win the gunfights inside the hill. And I'd say after this, admittedly, Thieves were making it tough, but only two points are needed to go and you get the bank spawns. Eventually, Ravens were able to, to secure the dub, but just a, a tough game. I think both teams will go back to the drawing boards watching this one and just say, oh my God, what was going on? Oh, there we go. That's going to be the end of it. What a play it was. Scuff player of the game there. And now we have a quick look at the Los Angeles Thieves. Again, Slasher is currently not present, but that one hurts. Now it's time to go over the tape and revisit that one. Again, nothing too dramatic there. I think that, of course, the raid, the raid search and destroy was a little bit too sloppy. I saw a lot of talk on the timeline about that one. Twitter is on fire right now. Really letting us know that that one was a bit of a throw, but hey, we'll see how they go. A lot of work still left to be done here for the LA Thieves. Now, we will look at the London schedule because this stage is far from over. They've started this one out 2-0, which is exciting to see for the London fans, but it is still going to be a tough one before they can close this one out. New York Subline is up next. They're going to play Toronto Ultra after that, and then the big old final boss that is Atlanta Phase on April 4th. And Charles, how do you fare the new London against the rest of the squads in the group now? Uh, I remain unconvinced uh, as far as like top teams go, right? I think they're still, like, obviously, we need to see him play the subliners. We got to see him play a team like FaZe, but 
In terms of positive takeaways, there's a ton of them, man. Like the respawn was on point, the checkmate control that they just threw on the board. I mean, the rest of the league is gonna have to take a gander and see what was going on there because they just have so many moments that are just ferocious, right? When Zed and Dylan start to go on a tear, they're a force to be reckoned with, so a lot to be seen still from the Ravens, but uh, again, looking pretty good now. We do see again those final two matches for Atlanta Faze will be a tough one for the LA Thieves, and they go up against their old LA rivals, the Gorillas, in the final match there on April 4th. And unbelievable stuff. But of course, our next home series, speaking of April, that's going to be the LA Gorillas home series. We've got lovely apathy there on screen. Again, set that into your calendars, friends. 3 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. Pacific from April the 1st to the 4th. We cannot wait. And of course, major number two, just around the corner. We are playing for the seeding going to that one. The first major was non-stop excitement. Love the drama from start to finish. Of course, Atlanta walked away with a win there. Major number two, who's going to get it, baby? Is it going to be Atlanta again? Are you going to let those boys slippity slap you all across the bracket? Maybe. We'll find out, though. When we come back after the break, we will be seeing Paul Lex chatting to us all about that big old win as London get the 3-1 done. We'll be right back after this break. The Call of Duty League is presented by Scuff, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. The US Army, what's your warrior? Ravens. Paul, first of all, welcome to the Call of Duty League. What an entrance you have made, my dude, from, you know, right from the first game that you played with London Royal Ravens, getting them their first dub. Now for the second dub, and the performance you have produced is just outstanding. What has it been like to join the Royal Ravens? How is uh, how's the fit for you? Um, honestly, coming into it, I was kind of nervous because, like, obviously I'm the only American joining a whole, like, European or, like, it's a whole different culture, right? So... Coming into it, I was kind of nervous, but as soon as I landed, they literally treated me like like their brother, and like I literally fitted in perfectly, and I just kind of like slotted in. So, um, 
coming onto this team, everything has been amazing so far. Fantastic stuff. Well, we can definitely see something is working, that is for sure. Uh, you guys are gelling like no other, and we love it. Um, I'll tell you what, though. There are lots of talented rookies in the Call of Duty League at the moment, and lots more coming in to the league pretty quickly. We've actually been showing a graphic of all of our best rookies and their debuts and where they're at currently in the league, and we kind of have a little leaderboard going on. And I'm sure you're aware we do have a Rookie of the Year prize handed out at the end of the year. Are you feeling a little bit competitive with that leaderboard? Are you looking to be the best rookie that we have for the season? I am. Actually, um, I just played against like my really good friend, Carlos, or Venom, that I've known for like three years. And as soon as we both got in the league, I literally told him, like, I'm going to be the rookie of the year, I promise you. So me and him are going to be competing for it for sure this year. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> That's the fire you need coming into it. I like the confidence, yeah. Paul, and you're certainly, you know, showing that in game. So we love it, man. Last question before I let you go, though. We have to quickly talk about that control game. What the hell happened? That was literally ridiculous. We've seen some fast control rounds, but I don't think we've seen a faster control game. How did you head into that one and finesse it the way you did? I just honestly, like, I don't even know, to be honest. I literally just took over. I didn't even notice I only died three times. I was literally just holding down the plane like the entire rounds. Like every single round I was in the plane. And I was just cutting them off off spawn. So their lives were dropping really fast because like I was just killing them off spawn so they couldn't even move. Yeah, I mean, dude, I think you outslayed them 50 to 19 or something silly like that. It was absolutely ridiculous. Um, keep up the momentum, dude. Absolutely incredible. Make sure you hydrate, guys. Look at that. Paul X <laughs> hydrating. That's the, that's the key. That's the key to good Call of Duty. That we appreciate is. you so much. Congratulations on a second win in the league of the Call of Duty League and your second game in total. So uh, amazing stuff, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it, Lottie. Well, there you have it, guys. We've heard from Paul X himself. He is unbelievable, and he's doing some incredible things for the London Royal Ravens. But next up, we have another battle on our hands. We do have two incredible teams battling out once again. NYSL take on LAG for another banger, and it's our last match of the day, so you don't want to miss it. The Call of Duty League is presented by T-Mobile, now America's largest and fastest 5G network. Set your sights on the competition with T-Mobile, the leader in 5G. He slices, he dices, he's Tommy Zuma Paparato. 
and he's here to teach you everything you need to know about frying. How you doing guys? My name is Zuma. Most of you may know me from playing professionally in Call of Duty over the years or maybe from my recent podcast, The Flank. I'm here to tell you guys, the viewers, that you have an opportunity to train with me in this week's T-Mobile 5G Weekly Drop. You know, I'll give you guys some tips and tricks on how to fry a little bit in Call of Duty. Or I can teach you how to fry in the kitchen. You know, I have been practicing a little bit in the kitchen. You know, I'm like an Italian Gordon Ramsay. I've been learning a little bit from Mama Zuma. You know what I'm saying? So it's up to you. Just make sure to text TMO Zuma to 313131 for a chance to fry with me. Have a good day, guys. Text TMO Zuma to 313131 for a chance to fry with a stallion. That's TMO Zuma to 313131. Don't wait. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Call of Duty League. Don't forget to text TMO Zuma to 313131. Whether you want to fry in Cold War, whether you want to fry in the kitchen, advice on the flanks, or advice on how to, you know, whatever this one is, the salt bay, you know. Whatever it may be, friends, text TMO Zuma to 313131. I cannot wait to see. I, I, I just want to know what, what he talks about with folks. Like people are like, well, I'm zooming you the go, baby. I love you, baby. Now let's talk about my stakes. That's what I want to know if they're so disgusting. But here we go. We've got one more series today for your boys and girls, and it's sure to be a delight. We've got the New York Subliners NYSL going up against the Los Angeles Gorillas. Now this should be a fun one, and I've done this enough. Let's just get to these teams. Let's meet NYSL. Don't let them down. Bring home my championship. Not one, not two, maybe three or four. Yo, Clancy, if you don't bring home the championship, you out of here, boy. <laughs> hey, if there's one thing about the city that I understand, it's that they don't tolerate losing. He's in from behind again! Placed it with two! So I'm bringing championships, we're bringing them by the dozen. Just make sure the snipes is hitting. Headshots only. Anything hot in the headshot is uncivilized. What the Zuma is? Zuma keeps on zooming. <laughs> the stallion is frying. The stallion is cooking. Not quite what I was thinking. You guys are gonna kill it out there. Good luck this season. Thank you guys so much. This season's for y'all. Subliners, way to go. New York's behind you 100%. We're bringing a championship to New York City. Well, last time we had the New York subliners grace our screens, we saw that ex incredibly exciting series against the LA Thieves. Can they keep the metal? Can they keep the ice? Will they be able to go all the way? A team close to Diamond Con and Mac. Uh, actually, Chance, I talked to Diamond Con about a nickname. I'll get to that in a moment. I'm very excited to see where this series goes. We'll talk about it later, mate. But how do you feel about NYSL today? Well, I felt great coming in. Now I'm just way more interested in the nickname. <laughs> this is unexpected for me, but I mean, this is a team that what probably third best in the game right now, depending on how much you value stage one in the tournament performance, but clearly towards the top, clearly capable of clutching the reverse sweep last week against the, the LA thieves proves that. And it's just a team. It feels like that, like if you can just get them to make more consistently smart plays, right? Occasionally they get like lose the two V fours on Moscow, but if you kind of get everyone on the same page as Clacer, this team is a, a force to be reckoned with. They have been incredibly entertaining to watch. And, and frankly, I mean, they have no bad game modes, no bad moments. They're a ton of fun, Miles. They really are. We love fun here in the Call of Duty League, but there's no fun for a moment. It's going to be strictly business as I get ready to introduce our next team. Hailing from the other side of Los Angeles. Can they do LA some right today? Let's find out. Time to meet the Los Angeles Gorillas. Done. Not loving what I'm seeing out of the LAG. Silly finds the first. Lovely teamwork. My Point God. Dealt with with the pressure inside the hill and the double nade from Apathy. Salt lines him up, finds himself too. Vivid just has the one to win against Arcane. And Vivid has got his number. Beautiful round. Fantastic execution from the LA Gorillas. Oh, yeah. The Los Angeles Gorillas chance. I mean, if New York's a fun team, Gorillas, I mean, they've had their moments, man, where they are the true lives of the party. And then every now and then, they're the guys in the corner who are not exactly enjoying themselves and just wish they could go home. But who do you think we're going to get today, my friend? Well, I would say Gorillas have been like fairly consistent. They're honestly just a really interesting team. Again, their teamwork is usually pretty good and they have some great moments, but they also have a couple of sort of uh, holes in their gameplay, right? Like they are the worst, for example, offensive team in control by 
quite a bit. They've only won 11% of their offensive rounds, two and 16 record in that regard. Their S&D is strong, but then the respawns, I mean, I think inconsistent is probably just the, the best word. They have good performances on occasion, but they never seem to really hit their stride. Even within the series, sometimes, again, inconsistency in my mind is sort of the uh, the main flaw for the team. But hey, when they're on point, they're a force to be reckoned with. And there's well, honestly not really many better teams than NYSL to try to prove yourself against. Got to prove yourself against in a good way. And again, they've still got a long road ahead of them here in this uh, in this stage before we get into major number two. But that's the look of the maps and most. Checkmate, let's go. Checkmate to get things going. Garrison Express, should we need them? But here we have it. Loading into map number one, NYSL looking to continue the run, see if LAG can pull this one back and get some smiles across those faces. We now roll into Checkmate Chance. Let's get it. Right into Checkmate, right into a map where again, we talk about New York every single time, their willingness to pull out extra ARs on separate hills. So clearly they are willing to be very comfortable on this map, do whatever needs to be done. New York had quite a bit of success, so it's important for the Gorillas, man. If they're able to take down this map, number one, hell of a way to start this series, but Glacer, obviously the man to watch. You talk about the MVP for the, the team, and frankly, one of the best players in the game right now. He really has been an absolute maniac. They do be the facts. Seam, playmaker now for NYSL, up on top. And wow, what a nice kill for there from Apathy. I really thought he had his number. Clay's still alive out here on the wing. Silly's going to try to change that. Oh no, Silly didn't see it. There we go, Clay. Oh, in and about he goes. Just about dropped there from Apathy. And again, we saw Checkmate in the previous series as well. Of course, LA Thieves making that big old comeback. I wonder if we'll see something similar here as the Gorillas start this on. One off very well. A bit of Silly now, cleaned up. And it'll be NYSL with a hill for the time being. This is honestly a very nice job done by NYSL, I'd say, right? They get bullied off the opening break. You got players from Gorillas pouring a ton of pressure over towards that next hill, but they end up clearing out the plane, making sure they're able to stabilize for P2. It'll be looking like Gorillas are going to have roughly a 20-point lead potentially going into new. These gunfights, though, very important just to try to get that clearance. Vivid, doing a nice job of staying alive. You see he wants to work with his teammates as they start to push towards this new hill. Oh, I see how much damage you can do from this position. I was going to say, a seam should be able to get that trade immediately. New York with spawns. Right-hand side of the map all covered. Apathy cleaving his way through the center of the map before he meets the Clayster. On board with Diamond Con now. DC, if you will. Diamond or Con to his teammates. He will go by any of these things. It's basically all up to how we feel, Chance. That's all the intel I've got on the nickname front <laughs> for Diamond Con. And there we go. 30 seconds remaining this hard point. Play from up top. That trophy just about in the way. He might be able to take a bullet or two, but there we go. The wall will not save him. We're seen there on the back line of the hard point. Cleaned up. It's on the Mac now. Nice job. Takes a few with him before he goes out. And whoa, Mac, still keeping this run going. There's one more on the point, Mac. Could get the contest. Your teammates are there to grab it. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Subliners will get the next 12. Subliners with the next 12. And now Gorilla is trying to set up for new. They actually get the back spawns towards all. So maybe Vivid able to get himself a free kill and set up the pinch for the new hill. Well, that kill is going to come through. And meanwhile, the wing battle coming through. Looks like New York, maybe that early Ooh. advantage is Mac gets the cleanup kill. But you see trades all over the map. Gorilla's the last few players left standing. And will have that control of the hill at least a little bit early on. You see uh, another pinch being developed again under these wings. It is so tough to manage, and well, you make things mixy. That's how a seam is gonna like it. Able to find a second kill as well from the player up top. Unbelievable stuff. Well, the kills are looking fantastic so far. Well, we may be on board with NYSL. I'd love to see how LAG pull this one back. Time now to go for an Astro Gaming listen in for Los Angeles Gorillas. Wing, I think. wing, dead. their box absolute diamond. their back steps? I'm pretty sure. He's at mid box corner. They're mid box corner. Low A wing. Right. Have a trophy. Yeah, we, gotta take we gotta take a route. We gotta take a route. He's gonna be a good one. He's gonna run away probably. He, he, I think he's gonna be a good one. He's gonna be a He's He's playing feet. He's exit. 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 Exit.
I'm not playing. What could be bottom? There's like diamond turret, and there's another one in the middle. Shot in their alley. There's holding. Wrap left. Wrap left. Top aiming. Top aiming. Dead. Chance nice. LAG. They're not necessarily keeping it tight in the scoreline, but I thought the comms mostly calm. I mean, the comms were like respectable, but again, sort of a, a theme for this team. They're like four and ten overall on hard point, and they just don't have the slaying power, at least in this game for the moment, right? Almost every single player across the board, with the exception of Apathy, just struggling for the moment, but. Hey, maybe one good rotation, one good hill, and especially so, if this is a team that can rotate and get set up, then they're going to be poised for the full 60s, but if you're the team that doesn't have the slang power right now and you're trying to work these breaks, it is not always fun, and you see, trying to work their way around back, for the moment, they were getting picked apart. Big spot for now, but we've got this hard point up. Salt is going to make his way forward. Nice bit of work, Clayson, now fighting for his life here in the wood building. He's still struggling a little bit, but oh boy, he slipped sliding. Looking like Simp out there. The shots, though, do finally come through. Asim can't quite get it done at a great range there with a 74U. 20 and 12 overall for Asim so far, though. Nice kills early on to help New York pick up, pick up this big lead. Kai can't quite get it done through the wall bang. Vivid once again finds those big individual fights. On board to Mac now, as again, no one from NYSL has really been able to get back onto this point shot. It's been a good hold from LAG. A good break as well. Like, as soon as I try to give this setup to be like, <laughs> ooh, struggle on the slang power, can't break the hill. Well, they walk straight through and get the break. Even still, though, they find themselves down by quite a bit. And we talked about their rotations. New York out-rotated them to the second hill. Almost beat them to the third hill. Admittedly, it was pretty scrappy. But then just keep beating them on these rotations. Admittedly, this time, the retake is very quick, very instant, right back inside. Not for the contest, but for the actual time. Real is trying to do whatever they can to start working away at this lead. And you see the kills and the feed as soon as they go through for New York. They surge the plane. Silly, the last oh. man standing. And well, Silly tries to go big, but too many players for him to deal with. New York back inside. Oh, it certainly cost New York a pound of flesh to get that point. Straight on the point we go again. Diamond Khan, this is as if nothing changed. The shots are in there to assault. Max going to pick up the pieces. And that is a wonderful bit of a break there. Straight off spawn from NYSL. Test hit. Diamond Con's trying to find something. Desperation, if you will. But meanwhile, on the top right hand side of the minimap, it's going to be Clayster going up against Assault now for the next hard point. And it's going to be a big win from Adam Assault. With that, now it's got to take on the next comers. And they're all going to be swinging. Asim finds one. Matt gets one as well. Can Apathy slip inside now and deal the damage? He does manage to make the opening kill on a one. Max up next. This could be fantastic for LAG. A nice couple of kills going their way. And this two-man push has survived for the time being. Clay with a nice big win. Oh, and just like that, it is all over. LAG cleaned off the point. Viv is the last one left on this side of the map. He's got a lot of work to do alone. And this is just, again, Gorillas literally cannot win a rotation at this point seemingly to save their lives. Even when it's getting scrappy and they can kind of get there first, they never get that extra breath of life. They never get that, like, extra two-piece that they need. And well, New York, happy to take full advantage of it. By the way, Asim, himself a, a very nice game right now. 25 kills to his name. And just trying to put on for the team. Put on indeed, mate. Put on in a big way. Final 20 seconds now remaining at this point, And it looks to be all New York subliners. Doing a fantastic job here on the hard point of checkmate. Clay finding the players off spawn. Not finding a lot of shots though. <laughs> he does right place, right time. Just missed him. <laughs> Just straight up missed him, but that's fine. Ties his teammates a lot of time. Over towards the third hard point we go. Under the plane. Once again, look for those angles. Diamond Con try to find something in the back line. No, Assault's going to lock it down again. 15 and 20 overall for Assault. But he's on a three spree chance now. Pulling this one around. And he also knows as well, fourth kill is going to be easy for him for the cleanup. And, well, maybe this is the, the life that they needed. This has been a lot of kills going their way for New York. Mac is the last guy around the point. He gets dealt with and Assault now thinking about streaks. They're down by 70, but you can see they even potentially Ooh. have, like, the good spawns for the next few hills. Big moments for these guys. Need to turn up and for Assault, they need to get him these score streaks. He's still going, man. Still finding them. Nice shot from Silly at range there. Apathy doesn't have to do a whole lot here on point. Good job from him. Still on a six spree right now for Assault. If he pushes out, again, he wants to play for these streaks. Sees a clay slide across. Providing the information to the teammates. All in the meantime, finding those kills. Nice job. There's going to be the artillery. One more will get him the full cruise missile. And his pockets will be loaded. They need to work with here. Seems up next. The Willie knows to the right-hand side. Assault playing this one very slow. Good awareness of the spawns. The red dots now popping up on his mini-map. Here he goes. Will he get the streaks? No, just a little too slow. But still, there we go. A nice bit of artillery to work with Chance. And LAG pulling the time back in a great way. 
Although they're pulling the time back, but they also just immediately got broken. You take that, like, wonderful, honestly, P3 Hill, and then Clayster, he just starts working that left wing. He's able to pick up two kills, flip the spawns, and just winning those AR gunfights in New York. Ooh. Well, there might have been a little bit of life for the gorillas. They're trying Yo. to snuff out Diamond Con with the finesse from under the plane. Assault goes on a five spree. Diamond Con says, well, Yo. I can do that too. And he's doing it with the quickness. Yo, big DC going huge. He almost killed Vivid as well. He snapped right on a Vivid in his way in the plane. The Diamond Con is absolutely frying right now. Asim with a couple of sweet snaps on the trophies and players alike. And now he's looking to find kill number four had it not been stolen from Diamond Card. Oh, baby. NYSL. Individual prowess across the board. You got three crackheads and a clayster. This team is looking fierce. Oh, they're looking quick, too. That's the way to pace it out. Assault now out of desperation. Trying to call these artilleries in, but, well, Diamond Con, that is just going to take two seconds of hill time away from New York as they are now just going to be able to potentially, well, close out the game, and instead, that is an instantaneous break. So, Gorillas, maybe they have the, the secret formula for success for breaking this kill. The artillery with the information certainly helpful, and... Ooh. They're still alive for just a moment. Oh, that's it. You can I, see just I, from the front man, Diamond Con just surging through New York. The pressure that they are applying oh. right now is ridiculous. And Mac, a big reason why the feed for them at the end and game number one in the books, New York Subliners with the first map dub. Oh, and they are pumped. The team is pumped. We saw Mac land, land that final kill from the back of the hard point there. He gets that one 1v1 one one win and with that. You saw the two dip tea bag of victory. It's an ancient technique, an ancient art passed down from decades of first person shooter players. That's when you know it's a GG, baby. What an opening map that was. NYSL looking particularly fierce there on Checkmate. But we will now roll over to the stats and we'll see how the rest of this series unfolds, Chance. But good God, that was something. Again, major props to Diamond Con for. What an individual run that was. Movement, shots, awareness, you name it, all good. An individual run for him, but really just consistency from start to finish from a scene. Just had a, a fantastic performance, but I think the theme of the game, at least for the first half, is New York just completely out-rotating the Gorillas. And then you had the hill where Assault starts to go on streaks. He set it for the P3. It was kind of interesting, because once they actually had control of the hill, it seemed like the game slowed down a ton. And then as soon as, well, the next hill comes through, then we go with Diamond Con just lighting up the feed, going on a quick pace. And it really just seems like that was the issue. Just New York able to outpace their opponents, play a little bit too fast for those guys to handle. And again, well, a lot of big individual plays as well, not just from Diamond Con, but from Clayster, well, and everybody uh, as well. New York putting on on Checkmate. Well, checkmate, that's over. We can close the chapter on that one. Now we roll across to a search and destroy on Moscow. But first, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be a commercial break. You knew it was coming. Don't act so surprised. We'll be right back after this one with more Call of Duty action to put into your eyes, ears, and brain. See you right after this. Call of Duty League is brought to you by GameFuel. Use code CDL2021 for a special discount on GameFuel.com. Tournament audio and team listen-ins are powered by Astro Gaming, the official headset and mix amp of the Call of Duty League.
Damsey, messieurs, welcome back to the Call of Duty League. We've got ourselves a Moscow search and destroy on the way, but first chance is the LAG's game fuel keys to victory. And again, we've mentioned the consistency like quite a few times already just in this series. And well, I think that's on the SMG is like Vivid honestly has some of the most ridiculous stats in the league. He's like number one in kills per game, number one in damage per minute. But in spite of this, he's what? In his search and destroys, only three out of his 11 games have he's gone positive. Five out of his 14 games in hardpoint, he's gone positive. So they just struggle, I think, collectively as a team to really just have those consistent strides as a collective. And again, even sort of that first map we saw in Checkmate, we sort of a good indication, like they get the rotation, someone starts to get a little bit hot, easy full 60 on the P3, and then just something happens and New York just completely takes over and everything crumbles. And of course, it's interesting because on the flip side for the subliners, well, if the gorillas aren't really pushing the pace, they're not gonna be forcing a ton of mistakes. So really, as long as the subliners make sure that they're not making any of those unforced errors, they should be good to go. Checkmate was a great example in there. More importantly for them, well, just ban, especially that rage control. It is the only map for control that gorillas have had any success on. Well, you take it away. Now New York gets a checkmate for map three. If they're ever concerned at all, well, checkmate again, a defense heavy map. Well, New York, the best team in the game on offense on checkmate. So in my mind, that checkmate control is a free win for New York, at least from what we've seen so far this year. So I'd say for gorillas, obviously, map two must win. A must win indeed. If you want to see another Let's see how this goes. Assault waiting for something there, waiting for somebody to pass him a, a bottle of water or something, or a pass the ball, who knows? But for NYSL, I mean, you're looking here, nothing but love. Oh, it's headphones, there you go. Nothing but love there for NYSL. They are just enjoying their time right now. And again, you have to go back to the start of the season. That squad, the, the desired roster, they didn't get. But now, everything just seems to be clicking and they are loving life. A couple of tweaks here or there, and they could well be in top contention, but not to uh, not to sell the sell the story before it's told, but NYSL, what a wonderful turnaround for them. LAG again, mixed results, mixed mixed motions all around. If they can pull something out here, this would be a big one for the series. But touch and destroy in Moscow. Here we go. LAG on offense. There's a, a three stack over towards the A site. Fairly aggressive as well. Yeah, Vivid just going to be running straight in. See right now on the feed, you got Silly on the mini map, effectively watching middle of the map. Well, he wants to group up with his teammates. New York have completely given this up, and it looks like Gorillas almost don't know what to do with it. They decide to get the bomb down, and well, this is New York trusting their retake abilities. Everyone coming through white. They got a charge just right through it, man. Here comes the push. Max going to find the opening kill, which helps a lot. First blood goes his way, but it's only one. There's a few more to be had. Diamond Con going to open up the flank, hopefully. Assault lined him up. Easy kill onto a seam. Silly finds his. LAG picking them apart one player at a time, but Diamond Con makes it that bit more interesting. The trades are there. LAG with a round. I mean, good opportunity, but honestly, LAG just set up the firing squad. I, I don't even you know who was really watching the flank for LAG, but obviously no one needed to. And well, Assault Big plays out of him, finds the trade for one of the first kills and gets the trade for the final one. A uh, very interesting round, I'd say, from New York, just trusting the, the retake, but they get punished for it. And I don't know if we'll see a, a similar defensive strat like that again. <laughs> who knows, man? I mean... Anything can happen here or, in the CDL. Or, like, when I say similar, they might, like, give up the bomb plan over towards A again, but, you know, sending someone through mid-map, sending someone on the full flank, just anything other than the, the full four-man retake, Dude, all from the same direction. We're seeing another three-man push. Here we go. Diamondcon, Mac, and Asims. The crack gets closing the outside of the map. He's going to make his way slowly through Eskies. Who's going to win their opening fights, So That's going to be the question. Assault near in apathy and watch that middle push after again the salt's job then to make sure no one makes their way through the street through boulevard but that's not what the play is it's over towards a oh vivid picked out slowed down a little bit of friendly fire diamond con and co now making their way forward pushing up to take control of that bomb site silly wonderful movement just about dodges any semtex there so diamond con oh boy wins another big one that's absurd a seam prime position to get the kills Ugh, diamond con big round from nysl yeah, that's just a, a dominant round as well. Diamond Con just showing off the gun skill towards the end. Nice little slide pop into the gunfight. You win that basically 10 out of 10 times. And well, there's another example why Assault probably only saw him for, I mean, what, half a second at best. Just going to get fried, but it's two for two. Uh, on the offensive rounds, both plants over towards A. Both teams, after they get the bomb down, making light work. 
of the team on defense. In my mind, I'm thinking if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But Gorilla is trying to mix things up. Going for what looks to be more of a map spread. There's going to be playing for picks, seeing if New York is going to overcommit and make any mistakes. Well, the keys try to keep the mistakes at a minimum. LAG will punish ya. Oh, Assault just rips a seam out of that one. We'll see here in the next round. Apathy now making his way forward straight into the apartment building they go. Actually, they've dipped out. They've made the noise. If anyone's in there, as you can see, NYSL have made their way forward on the defense. Mac, oh, holds true for a brief moment before Vivid finds that kill. 3v2, Clay's for in Diamond Con. They are split right now, but Diamond Con about to hit the flank. Oh my God, the timing could be great. Clay can find a kill. That's huge. If Clay can find one, can't get it done. Diamond Con now on the 1v3. A little too slow to make the push up, but now... Just dodges the eyes of Vivid, who's going back and forth, bomb down. What can he do now in this 1v3? For him is he's going to have to cross out of here and Vivid well just watching Eskies. And as soon as he takes this gunfight, doesn't even win it. But if he had, he is just going to be completely trapped inside of Eskies. Not a lot of life for him to make anything work. And specifically for this gunfight, I'm telling you, that, that's almost like a fake head glitch. The guy that's on the street wins that 9 out of 10 times. For a seam, just gets caught out for a moment. Headshot multiplier coming into a full effect. And outside of that, I'd say just very well timed. Everything from the gorillas, right? You start to push out of Eskies over towards bomb. That's exactly when Silly is going to be checking over towards bushes. You got assault peaking top Eskies when he's holding the bomb through the middle of the map. Well, that's when Vivid's making sure that he's over towards fountain for the trades. All for New York. They're working over towards B. And you know for these guys, they're going to be concerned about the street farm. You know that is one thing that will always be on their mind. I think that's what Diamond Con's job is right now. He's gonna play statue a little bit slower. You can see him watching the flank. The rest of them managed to swarm the apartments. It's an open house right now. So they've gone on in. They've had a good look around. Check the place out. Assault just now from the outside. Got a lot of ways in. Here come LAG. Late push there. They've all managed to flood out. They've just jumped straight out of the windows and straight into the mouths of LAG. It's all on to Mac. They flooded out the back, trying to catch a player foot, but no, LAG. They were just like, yo, NYSL are coming. Is the apartment on fire? Why did they all run out? It was a ballsy play chance, but uh, that's another round for LAG. I think that's LAG doing their homework. If I remember correctly, when New York played Thieves on this map, they had two different situations where they got the bomb down in laundry. Obviously, one of those rounds was the 2v4 that the Thieves pulled off, but the other round where they actually had success, after they got the bomb down, everyone actually wrapped out of window back towards the street, and well, Vivid, again, did his homework, knows that that might be one of the potential play calls, sets up the trap, and well, lines up quite a few kills. Five spree for him, by the way. Strong start right now for the Gorillas. Great job. Team and Clay, they're both sitting on breadsticks currently, but likely to change that in the near future. Apathy also on the breadstick, but still, LAG, they are looking brilliant here on Moscow so far. Whether it's the homework being done or just the overall ferocity of the play. And oh my God, Clayster and Mac. They open the round up brilliantly. I'm not sure if they've seen the bomb, but they know full well. Oh boy, Diamond Con's on the flank. Just takes care of Silly. Assault, can you make it interesting? The answer is no. NYSL, a fast round. Good call. Good call as well. I mean, if you got two bodies on the A site, again, we've even seen them at times uh, just backing up, giving up the point for free. They did not want that same situation to occur. So they might be taking the man disadvantage with the fights. They're making sure they're there for the trades. The double challenge Esky is coming through and just a nice little cheeky strat. New York to get that bounce back round. Of course, now as they're back on the attack, well, it looks like it's going to be another A hit. Don't know how interested the subliners are going to be in taking their time. Nope. I don't think they're taking their time at all, baby. That's New York through and through. Hustle and bustle now brought to game, silly. Oh, good job. No stick. That was managed to stay alive. Clayston now making his way forward. Great kill on a vivid. That was ridiculous. Clean shots. Now on the retake, 3v3. Bushes. Through the white corridor. Take your pick. Here we go. Silly's going to be the first in. Those tags are slow and steady. 30 seconds now on the clock. Diamond Con opens it up with the first kill. The team finds this as well. They're going to back on up together. Diamond Con now able to get the last one as well. NYSL, another great round chance. And they're just funneling them in. I mean, I think all three rounds you've had for the offensive team, once they get the bomb down on the site, 
they just set up the funnel, right? Making sure you get the crossfires ready to go in this bricks control where the difference maker is. We saw Assault with a, a very similar best play. Just a few rounds ago, well, John took notes. Knows what the game plan is over on that site. Getting the job done. I think both of these teams probably figure out a, a slightly better way to try to retake A. Neither one able to have any success. Yeah, already making it work. So here we go, once again. And watch Vivid make his way as that island player. And again, we've talked about this time and time again. You can have great success in that position and that role, or you can basically die and do a whole load of nothing for your squad. But three man push now. The rest of the team making their way over towards B. Vivid's going to be joining them. Cuts his way through mid map as well. Much slower round here from LAG, trying to slow down the pace of the game, not let that hot hand of NYSL keep striking. Diamond Con deals a ton of damage. Wow, Vivid is hurt. Just about survives there. Was that enough information, though, Chance, to really give up the play? I mean, NYSL are not really budging here. It's just on the scene. See, they really just are playing around for the information, but Ooh. there's that first pick that comes through. Vivid just gets caught out by Diamond Con, so first blood by way of him for a seam. His job is mainly just to stay alive and get the information. You see, player goes into the site. He immediately runs away. Frankly, his teammates aren't even wrapping over towards site yet, but... Even if they give up the bomb plant, they should know they have their back police, back street control. It's really about what the, the two players that are over towards A want to do. Looks like Glacier, instead of going through mid-map, they just want to group up together and take this 4v3. And well, see him again, playing for the information, needs to wait for his teammates, and now the reinforcements have arrived. All oh, information's all good and well, but you still need players. Diamond Con. Oh no, he's taking a right hook and a couple of shots there from Silly. There's going to be the last one left now. It's Apathy, 1v2. And that's big tags, big information. Asim wins the kill with just about 20 seconds on the clock, able to get the defuse. Clayster from top PD, eye in the sky. Relays all that information and the rest of the players go around and do the dirty work. Wonderful stuff on the retake from NYSL. And honestly, just perfectly played by Asim. Again, just throwing a couple shoulders, spotting out for this information constantly. And I think part of an issue for that setup right there for the Gorillas is they actually have no idea if they're getting full flanked, right? If you have no information on how many players are where, they never saw Clays for that round, they never saw whoever the other player that was over towards the A site. So they just don't know what they're working with. They try to force it out the back street and well, just get set into a trap. Three rounds in a row right now for NYSL. And it looks like, again, their aggression over towards A on offense has been working out very well for them. And Clayster, big reason why, but Gorilla stacking this heavy on defense. Heavy flashes there. You got a lot of info, oh, but oh boy. Yo, they slid the escalators. They're down. They're now going to make their way forward. Run, Assault, run. They're coming. Clay finds the first, the entirety of the squad now, making their way through mid-map. This could be devastating though. Again, if they get caught in a pinch or in a bit of a crossfire here, and New York, they, they're back and forth. They are deliberating between oh, the, where this. to make the play, but they're going to be slamming into apathy. How many kills can he get before they bring him down? Oh my God, it may be none. They've bamboozled him? No, you cannot bamboozle Apathy. Two go down. Brilliant work. He's done a man's job there. And now it's a 2v2 NYSL. Well, back they go again, Chance. They are oscillating from one point to the other. But here come LAG. Oh, they're just on the hunt now. 2v2 oh. shooting the players in the back. Play oh. calls on play calls. And Gorillas with the 3v4 clutch. I don't know who gets the best play, but Apathy deserves it. Viv is going to get it to show us these final two kills. But that is so interesting because, honestly, the play call from York is fantastic, right? You get the kills towards the middle of the map. You take down Assault. You don't want to try to force it through over towards A, take back gunfights. You don't know if a player's in green. You don't want to have to deal with that. So they wrap it all the way back through their spawn. It would have been perfect if not for Apathy playing the smart angle, catching them on the cross, and Apathy spotting all four players through elbow. If it were not for that small little detail for New York, well, they'd be up 5-3 right now, but Apathy again, maybe just one step ahead in that round. That is terrifying, the subway strat, where they all just bunch up together and <laughs> fly. <laughs> they are, it's devastating, man, because you, if you come across that, the chance of you getting a trade is decent. Again, it's team kills. That's what you worry about the most, I suppose, in those situations, but the exact opposite for NYSL now on the defense. Very well spread across map. Diamond Con eyes on mid. Placer and Mac towards the A site, and you've got a scene watching that full street. Still, apartment has been given up. Bomb will be planted here at B. Silly will be watching the flank for the most part. The remaining members. Oh, lovely work from Assault. The remaining members there of LAG, they'll be on that bomb site, guarding it with their lives. 
Mac and Diamond Con. Real quick, Miles, by the way, this is comedy from Clayster. He learned from what happened with him with the full flank going all the way through bank. He's doing the exact same thing. And of course, well, for number seven, why would you ever expect a flank like this to come Ooh. through? It gives you the kill. Now you got the 3v3. That's big. So he's still back there. 20 seconds left on the clock. Is he going to make something happen? Apathy wins this fight on the point. The fight on the point! Won once again by Apathy. Now it comes down to Clay in a 1v3. No chance. LAG. That's going to be map point. Map point and Apathy right now just in these past two rounds. Basically winning his team the game. The pressure's actually on. Took a couple shots and for DC the trades do not come through. Apathy going big in these past two rounds, getting the job done. And well, first blood last round went the way of LAG as well. Quite certainly in him for Moscow, but again, just that full flank from Clayser in my mind is hysterical. That is completely <laughs> He couldn't have taken like a longer and more wide route as well, like far, far side of the boulevard, like hugging that right wall. Diamond Con gets flashed. He's used to that. We've seen that bright blue screen on the uh, player cams. Loves it. Apathy on a point. Brilliant work from LAG. This is magnificent. Vivid finds one. Now Diamond Con in the one versus three. Bomb is down over by the A site. Diamond Con's got to go play retrieval and slay out these three members of the team. Can he get it done? Chance. He's going to have to isolate those fights. Maybe watch for the flank. He's got just under a minute to do it. Not impossible, but it'll be bloody hard. Gorillas is a team in my mind that will almost never give up these 3v1s, especially with the fact that they have bombed down. Silly will spot check for information. No one's going to over challenge. No one's going to do anything more than throwing a quick shoulder. And of course, you even as assault mid map just as the, the bailout of a rotation. But Diamondcon trying to make the play. And again, as soon as you make a move, you just get pounced on. A must win map for Gorillas, and they are going to be able to get it. Nice job done towards the end to secure that 6 4 win we might have ourselves a series on our hands. We may just a lovely bounce back there from LAG. Friend YSL, again, nice moments. We saw some wild strats. I hope to see a little bit more of the subway plays. I wonder if they have different names to that one. Like, let's do the L train boys. You know, let's do, like, see if, depending on whereabouts they go. Uh, but that's something for uh, for Revan to mull over there. But here we go and look at the stats so far. And again, it was a very well-rounded effort there from LAG, Silly and Apathy going particularly large in the damage department across the board though. I mean, Diamond Con, he had a great run of things. I seem not so much, but again, for NYSL, back to the drawing board there on Moscow. LAG certainly had your number. But there we go, Chance. What a wonderful way to get through this series. We are tied up one to one, baby. I'm gonna get it right this time. I'm not gonna get wild and carried away just because there is a sandwich on my table that I would dearly, dearly want. <laughs> I want to stay focused like a damn professional but mate that was that uh yeah again i just think all in all like lag they're a very strong search and destroy team nysl may have dodged them on raid but looks to be fine they're on moscow as well so i don't know mate where do you how do you feel about going into the control and checkmate now after this i mean again i said it before in my mind this is almost just a, a free win for new york unless gorillas have gone back to the drawing board and solved some massive problems uh, in their game for checkmate again two and 16 overall on offensive rounds you're going into checkmate uh, it would be a massive turnaround if they find some success especially since this might be new york's best map uh, for the the third game mode so we'll see if they can pull off something crazy but in my mind this is just the the comfort pick <laughs> NYSL. nysl good job well either way here we have the u.s army tactical play it was going to be round eight of that search and destroy you called this a must win for lag and oh baby they did just that Charles, walk us through this one. This was, uh, was this the L train play? This was it. This was the fast one that didn't quite work out. Still, obviously, some work being done there. But Apathy, what a play from the uh, from the absolute veteran there. Trigger discipline, you name it, shot call on point. I, it really is just the, the trigger discipline that gets the job done just to be able to take down two players. And then the play call from Gorillas after that. I don't know if Apathy he got the death cam or if they spotted the information on the players wrapping through elbow, but Vivid saw the opportunity and he pounced on it. So it's just unfortunate for New York that Apathy is able to catch him out like that because I, I appreciate the L train call, but talk about a massive round. That is the difference between being down 5-3 and being down 4-3. Keeping it close, and that's why Gorillas able to get that win. Huge bounce back in a wonderful way, now tied up 1-1 in the series. We're going to take a very quick commercial break, and upon our return to your devices or your screens, wherever you are in the world, we're playing Checkmate, we're playing Control. It's going to be a lot of fun. We'll see you after the break.
Call of Duty League is presented by T-Mobile, now America's largest and fastest 5G network. Set your sights on the competition with T-Mobile, the leader in 5G. SCUF, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. The Call of Duty League is presented by USAA Insurance. We offer insurance that's made for the military community to help them easily protect what they've worked hard for. In a one versus one situation to keep his team alive, and is he gonna jump the bomb? Diamond Khan lands the shots at NYSL! They will complete the reverse sweep! I may never get tired of seeing that kind of passion. A social soundboard powered by Astro and it's some wise words from Clayster. It seems like the vets are finally understanding the importance of bringing in rooks who've grown up on COD. A couple of years too late, but thanks for the rings. You can barely hear what he's saying there over the clatter of Clay's championship jewelry. Quick look at the rookies though. This is our little rookie roundup the 2021 CDL season so far. Venom, Standy, Insight, and Paul Lex. Again, all on different teams, but they have had massive impacts on their respective squads all, all in all. Venom may be the only one that hasn't had the biggest change so far, but honestly, I'd say we give him time. Give that squad a little bit of time to breathe, and we'll see how they go. While we're talking about all things good and fun, Call of Duty, don't forget to text TMO Zuma to 31 31 31 for some one-on-one -on -one time with the Italian stallion himself. I'm telling you, whether it's cooking, whether it's content, whether it's Call of Duty, a man knows his way around some things so give him, give him a text and see if you can have a chat the one-on-one -on -one with the man himself chance we're going to checkmate control now my brother how you feel uh, i'm feeling pretty good man uh, i'd say it's been a pretty good day so far uh, i've enjoyed the time with you uh, of course as always, always but we're going to this checkmate control this is like the, the ultimate test i'd say from the gorillas right you're going against the single best offensive control team in the game and I can't overstate that enough. Like 11 teams right now in the league, including your Chicago's, your Atlanta phases, your Dallas empires, have a negative win rate on offense, on control for all of the maps. Checkmate the most lopsided one. The one team that is shining the diamond in the rough with Diamond Con, of course, on the team is New York, who's won 65% of their offensive rounds. 17-9 record. And of course, for New York, it's not like they're bad at defense either. It's not like a one-sided thing. It is just control has presented a handful of problems that need to be solved on any given map. Right now, New York, they're just the problem solvers, man. They have had the answer. Well, gorillas don't take a page out of the, the book of New York and find a way to start winning some of these rounds. Again, at least the, the way it looks on paper, New York is very happy to be playing on this map right now. For those of you who have been watching since the show started, of course, we did get to watch London take on LA Thieves in this map, which could well have been the fastest round of control in CDL history. It was. Four minutes and 17 seconds. Lordy! That was the whole game. That wasn't even the f that one round. That was ridiculous. And okay, okay, NYSL, they may be making a case to try to break it. Let's see what they got. Clay, big win. Big win on Assault. Any more to be had here? Diamond Con's going to make his way forward. Apathy in a bit of trouble as well now. No one's quite been able to make the contest. You can see that front line of the minimap. Look how far forward that one is for NYSL. Again, for those of you taking notes at home, for those of you trying to improve your own team, or just have a good time in league play, just push forward. No point in dying on plane. You may as well bring the fight to the other team. But here we go. Apathy really trying to go for a chance. And Clay says nay. Clay says nay. And well, now you got a seam just behind enemy lines. And Assault surely going to fall in quick order. And this is just the problem, man. It is just so incredibly annoying when someone gets behind enemy lines they can just buy all the time in the world play corner shoot you in the back and right now you have three players on the gorillas that are just trying to hunt a scene down and it takes three to get him and even still he takes one with him and his teammates there for the trades six life lead right now for the new york subliners in only 15 seconds on the clock new york saw what the ravens did and I want to see if they can beat the record. Yeah, well, they're trying. Diamond Con's finding a few more. Six seconds remaining. Anyone in position? The answer is a hell no. As Clay lands the final few shots. NYSL, take the first round. Oh, baby. Take the first <laughs> round. And again, right now, just staying on record pace. Now, 
I, I mean, it's not even like as a like a commentator, I can just give you the answers of like how to win your offense. It's basically one. You can never get spawn trap. Like you need plane control. You sort of basically just need to start spawn killing the opponent, even when you're on offense. So the opening breaks incredibly important. But even in saying that, it's not like New York are just dominating the rounds on offense. They are just so consistent of just making things scrappy. It's coming down to, you know, 1v1s inside the actual hills. And they always just somehow find a way to win. Well, just a, another opportunity to watch New York work. You got Vivid working from the top wing. Opening break for the LA Gorillas. That's what you want to see. They get those first two kills. Now Vivid trying to get that map control. Oh, so you want to watch NYSL work? Why don't we listen at the same time? Ladies and gentlemen, time to go for an Astro Gaming listening with the New York subliners. you One's back there stairs. He can tell, he tell, yeah, he pinched, he pinched our push up. Push up. Push 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 well, and you hear the complications as well, just how many things that they're having to deal with while they're trying to capture this A point. But I think you see some of the ideas, right? Matt getting into the top of the plane. You go for the A first. They're trying to do their best, but obviously on defense, LA Gorillas have been on point. Nice little life advantage. Nothing has gotten away from them. And well, maybe for New York, 25 seconds on the clock. Need some magic to try to make this round happen, but and magic is what they have. It seems still alive around a bomb. Kills going back and forth. It seems the magic man, Clayster, may conjure up some special stuff here with a quick contest. 11.6 on the clock. Oh, hello, Nate. Hello. <laughs> so with a final peppering of shots there to get the kill done, and that's going to be it. No one's on the point just yet. Oh, final contest. NYSL, they've dipped off. They found the kills. Oh, Matt can win the one, but he can't win the second as well. And just about no more contests to be had. LAG. Just about managed to bounce back there. We're all tied up one to one. Job well done. And maybe the focal point of the round is once Max sort of uh, gets on the backside of the plane in the spawn of the gorillas, if they don't get him out of there quickly, again, it's a power position. He's going to be knowing where he's spawning the guys out towards back behind wood. That helps make the, the clearance over towards the A capture that much easier. As soon as gorillas take him down, that much easier of a route and even the nades that they have on the players. Make sure you get the coordination as well. So. Not as dominant as what the subliners were able to throw up on board, but they get the job done nonetheless. Opportunity number two for the Gorillas. Back on the attack last time, they got slaughtered off the opening break. Looks like this time, it is going to be a heavy A hit. Heavy A hit indeed. And we talked about the importance of this map for the subliners. Again, should be a comfortable pick, but LAG are doing everything they possibly can to ruin that. Apathy now. Look at this aggression. Far forward on offense. Eyes on at least one player. Just trying to relay the information. Kills would be great as well. Mac, hello. Hello. Mac saw it. He knew something was up. Silly. The shots there on point. For those of you wondering, yes, the QBZ. With, uh, with the iron sight. So again, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But again, a shift, ever shifting meta here in the CDL. Player preferences all around. A points being slowly but surely drained. Apathy may run into some trouble here. Diamond Con. What a slip slide that was. My word. My word. Now he's equipped. Thankfully, the nades from Assault. Actually, nades all game long right now. Chance from LAG have been sweet. I mean, oh, the, the nades might be good, but the, the spawn killing is not. They are just trapped once again. It seems like any time on defense after New York get maybe one or two kills, the clearance and setup they get on the map, they do it in so many different ways, but they are just lethal once you give them a moment. And just a, a quick word on the QBZ with no sight. That just means he's not rocking gunfighter. He wants the flak and the tack. So he doesn't have to deal with the nades and stun. So just a, a personal preference thing, I'd say. And well, Placer making a new angle, able to take down at least one player. And where he falls, his teammates are there for the trades. You can't even cross out of P2 because you're going to get chopped down. Both Mac and Asim just waiting for it. And Gorillas know it. They're stuck in their base. They're not going to make anything happen. They're just trying to play for kills. But it really doesn't make a difference because they are down by 
so much the slang department. Oh, that's a big round win for NYSL. Essentially guaranteeing, unless the next round is awful, they've essentially guaranteed themselves defense on that final round should we have to go there. But, oh baby, that was a smacking. Great stuff on the defense once again. Neither the team really able to make much happen on these offensive rounds, but let's see. Still one more to be holding. NYSL can get it done here. That'd be tremendous. But for LAG, you're trying to deal a very deft blow here on defense and try to make that final round yours on the defensive side. Can they get it done? Here we go, Chance. Once more, onto the breach for NYSL to try to take the lead in the series. Gorillas need this defensive win, obviously, but they need it in dominant fashion. Opening break always going to be important. And the mix up, by the way, from the subliners right now, taking it a little bit slower and actually working the, the B point first. Mac jumping up top and, well, two piece for him to start things off. And by the way, he's on a four spree. Not sure if the streaks will come into effect, but they're certainly nice to have in the back pocket. And of course, oh, that's what he's looking for is Diamond Con on the opposite side of the map, getting the beat down. Oh, oh, silly. Once again, just finding those crucial 1v1 kills. Very patient play. A top wing can't quite get any more there. Lovely work. Silly once again keeping the spree alive. A nice two spree now to make his way forward. But she's players back. Mac's going to slide out. So unfortunate on the timing. His internal clock there. A fraction of a second too fast. He would have been able to catch that kill on Mac and potentially keep dealing the damage. Nonetheless, the rest of the squad holding up towards A. A single tick completed here. Big win from Assault. Slows down the push once again. Apathy finds his as well. Gray's now over towards the left-hand side of the map. It all comes down to Mac chance in that top plane position. Everyone else on spawn. It really does appear that Max Home is going to be in the plane the entire time. The Gorillas have dealt with it quite a bit. You see these moments and opportunities once Mac gets inside the plane, starts picking up a couple kills. But as soon as you solve that problem, it makes it that much easier and vivid. Should have seen at least two, if not three players there. And well, his teammates chopping a couple of them down. Again, right now, a bigger issue for Gorillas. They need to win this in a dominant fashion. But of course, they'll just take the win outright. New York still in the attack, but they have too many players behind them. This is just in my mind, almost impossible right now for subliners to win. Yep, we are going to be going to that final round in just a matter of moments. Again, a few more kills going the way of LAG. Doesn't hurt anything whatsoever. Trades are there. But that will be that. Final round. See who gets the defense. We are expecting it to be NYSL. I'm not going to lie. Haven't even looked I at the maths. I mean, look, 100%. It's they should not 100% even get it. I was so confident. I didn't even look at the numbers. I didn't want to know. Never tell me the odds. I was just, I'm so confident that after that second defensive round, they got it. If they don't, I'll have to shave the beard. I'll have to. I regret saying that now, but we'll see how we go. <laughs> imagine. Can you imagine? Jesus. All right, here we go. New York on the defense chance. This should be all good for them. They've done it twice thus far. Once more. Unless LAG can pull out something truly flashy, truly magical, we should be seeing NYSL take the game here. They just got to take full advantage of any moment if they get it, right? You see Apathy uh, a few rounds ago when he's pushing out A Street. Well, you think that's the moment, by the way. Clayster sprinting to the spawn. Assault apparently prepared for it. So a couple kills that are going their way early on. They have A control, a seam. <laughs> From the top rope, trying to pull a print <laughs> six and assault well, eventually gets dealt with. Playing control for the moment. Well, back in favor of Gorillas. This is honestly a, a pretty good start as well. You're up by a couple of kills. You're trying to get that playing control. More importantly, you got two ticks over towards A. Not a bad start at all. Uh, this is not what you expected. Diamond Con on the defense, though, slides on through. Assault's going to just about get the better of him. There's no more trades to be had there. Assault, Assault, he keeps winning the fights, and that's going to be that. We may see a point captured. The A zone now being stacked upon the members of LAG, and then we go over to B. And what do you know, Chance? The special something. As the Los Angeles Gorillas managed to finally capture a point, the first point we've seen captured all map long. Now we roll over to one final more. Matt wins a big one at the back line, and my, my, my. What if LAG got special in the tank to try to pull this round win out? Oh, this is an opportunity for Vivid maybe to make a play, but unfortunately right now his teammates are spawn trapped, so he might need to make the commitment, try to go for a fast flank to pick him up, but Diamond Con's going to be looking for him. And on the flip side, well, Placer in the power positions up in top of the plane. Again, control here is everything. By the way, Vivid and Diamond Con have basically just completely <laughs> turned the tables. Yeah. And Vivid, he's going to need to get a one or two piece here just to open up the floodgates for his teammates. 
Plenty of time to work with, but there's the first, Ooh. the second coming through. This is the moment. Okay, so that was it. A big couple of kills now. You've still got Clayster at the back of the plane trying to do the exact same thing. Diamond Con cuts under the middle. The trades are there. And still, you've got Vivid alive on the NYSL side of the map, finding more kills. Five spree now. A few more, and you could arguably have streaks, and that could be devastating. But still, you don't have anyone there from LAG even close to the point. Now the approach begins as NYSL desperately scramble to cut down Vivid. Finally get it done. And here comes the capture. Anyone there on B to try to make this work out? Apathy trying not to dip the toe to let them know that the play is afoot, but Diamond Con chance continues to just be disgusting all map long. There's huge wins on the flip side. Clayster, by the way, was just sitting in the spawn of his opponent. Maybe another flank coming through from Apathy. Oh. Maybe an opportunity. But again, while all of this is going on, so many of the players on Gorillas just getting picked apart in their spawn. Apathy Ooh. trying to open things up in the top of the plane, and there's two kills. But then you see a seam popping up in the feed, and then he responds with two of his own. New York, again, just constantly being annoying. But finals for Gorillas, maybe the moment they can finally get out of their base and towards the point in Apathy at least with one tick through, stopping that clock. 25 seconds now on the clock. Eight lives for NYSL, five lives for LAG, and they are starting to go back and forth, an exchange of blows. Diamond Con, once again, incredibly confident, making his way directly onto the point, sweeps in, takes care of Assault, looking for one more, and the confidence is through the roof right now for Big DC. A third to be had! Vivid's the last player left alive, and now for NYSL, it looks to be just that. No lives left, Vivid now. Able to get it done, he cannot, as NYSL finally closed the door there on checkmate control. But man, LAG certainly made them work for it. They saved the best for last, but it wasn't quite enough. The defense, it holds. I mean, it really is difficult, again, to solve that problem. But there was actually, I mean, three or four solid opportunities for the Gorillas to set something up. There was always just a, a constant thorn in their side. Just someone from New York either just pushed up in the plane, spawn killing, or in a corner behind them, front nass, whatever it's going to be. But, I mean, if you get Vivid picking up two pieces underneath the wing and you get the bodies on point, you don't get opportunities like that often on offense. That's where you have to convert. That's what New York subliners are very strong at on the map, but even just looking at the stats, I mean, it's 4K plus across the board in terms of damage for the subliners. Not even close on the flip side for the Gorillas. Nice, well-rounded effort there from everybody on NYSL. And boy, oh boy, not the uh, not the way we thought that checkmate was going to go, but still a decent win there from the boys of NYSL. Right, friends, time for another commercial break. An opportunity for all of us to rehydrate, crack open another can of game fuel, and get back to some COD. We'll be right back after this quick commercial break. Hello CDL fam, thank you so much for watching. Do you guys fancy getting your hands on more rewards? Then make sure you click on the rewards button right next to the diamond icon and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more CDL content.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Call of Duty League. Let's talk apathy. World champion, star-studded player, a damn fine su submachine gun player, and a wonderful father and husband to boot. But still, let's take a look at his stats this season, Chance. Anything there that screams to you? Uh, I, I mean, a lot of screaming. I, I think <laughs> is pretty identifiable just looking at the stats. I, I mean, again, it's... It's a, it's a story for LAG right now, right? The slang power and the respawn is not quite there. They are very much a team where when they're winning the rotation battles, when they're getting the full setups, they have a ton of success, but overall, they're just a couple teams that bully them out. And well, all of those respawn KDs were the, the very bottom of the league. So they just need to figure it out. Because even for Apathy, like if he's on the downside, again, Vivid has like some ridiculous level of production. Even if it's not showing in the KD, it's there for the damage. It's there for the actual kills that are occurring. They just need to figure a way to mesh that out between the two, whether or not that's Vivid playing slower at times, trying to play with more of the teams, or maybe even a communication of filling your teammates in with your information on what is actually going on on the map. Obviously, they have problems to solve, and well, Garrison, an interesting one to try to make it happen. See, just the, the breakdown of all the hills, and well, you could spend a ton of time trying to figure out where the major advantages are. Frankly, for what I'm seeing, not a massive gap in, in either direction, right? Tied on the, the P1 hill, P2 as close as it could be. It really just is about who wins that rotation battle in this series. What we saw map number one, well, New York certainly had the edge. Obviously, Gorillas, if they want to have some fight in them. Or to know if they get to map five, they can have a ton of success. They got to get past them on Gary, and well, it's a run back. Last time these two teams played, it was a 250-189 win in New York somewhere. Gary, Son, hard points. You now load into this one, friends. You know what the players are doing. Getting those final let's go babies out before we start this matchup. Map number four on its way. Interested to see those stats as well, Chance, when I go back and I think of that P5 hard point. That's the one, you know, again, closest to where LAG is spawning here. A tough one to be holding, but that's where NYSL have probably got the biggest disparity and difference between LAG, and we'll see. I think you're right, mate. There's not a whole lot to separate these two teams time-wise. It's really going to come down to who's bringing the goods right here, right now. Let's get into it. Do it as well, and take your pick on who you want to watch off the rip. This is a four stack over towards mid as well, so no one on the caution headies, but you get some decent information from as well. You got Ellie Gorillas actually double stacking up top green and vivid Ooh. from the top rope able to at least pick up one player. And obviously, Gil's going to be going back and forth. Back and forth indeed. Bit of unfortunate play there. He managed to land a bit of a, I think it was either a stick or a bit of a friendly nade onto Silly. Unfortunately, a seam. Oh, lordy. Nice big win. Pushing these players back. There's the flip. LAG now spawning on the right-hand side of the map. One player left is going to be Assault. How much damage can he do alone? I mean, he's got to go left and right. Oh, finds one. Assault wins his battle on the other side of the map. So, meanwhile, the hard point is raging. As NYSL managed to get themselves a little bit of time. But finally, you have that left side of the map cleared out now for NYSL. Play still will find as much time as he possibly can. He's doing what he can to stay alive, but it's going to be a seam there. He makes his way forward. And Chance, it's a nice start from NYSL. All good to begin the map. Oh, and I see, by the way, six spree. He's looking for streaks, but that is all uh, on him for that, like, break and that flip for new spawn. So, route man gets paid. We'll see if he can get the score streaks, and almost certainly he's going to. Should be able to Ooh. shoot a couple players in the back. There's the artillery. And just trying to stay alive, but silly there for the cleanup in the nick of time. And, well, now on the actual hard point. Diamond Con by himself, but he's been a highlight reel in this position before. Frankly, now he's got the teammates for the coverage. Once you're able to get onto the top plat, you got to imagine Diamond he's going to be good to go. Oh, he's going to be sweet to go. Here comes the full push now from LAG. NYSL lined up. Mac watching the inside. Diamond on the seam now making their way forward. Mac gets dropped. Vivid's going to get those opening kills. And LAG, they're making this look great. It's on a Diamond Con, but nay. The trades are fantastic. Placer's going to have to slow this one down and back it up. All things considered, though, still a very productive hard point from NYSL. The final 20 seconds will go the way of LAG. But now you have to look towards the third hard point, right-hand side of the screen. And here we go. Apathy is going to slow these players down on the rotation through mid, and it is a war on the inside of Garrison. Oh, and you got to hold your kill cams, too. I, I don't know if Mac was the one that died first, but he's going to spawn out either way. So maybe missed opportunity or maybe just perfectly timed kills for the Gorillas. That is an instantaneous break on this hill, and frankly, 
Well, obviously the biggest moment of the game so far, but this is something I might think back to once this game ends. Gorillas right now just put themselves in a fantastic spot. And Coliseum right now, you can see what he's doing, just waiting for his teammates. It's a little bit of support before he can make his move. Yep, he's going to do what he can. Seam, Gus playing footsies right now, waiting for the opening. There comes the push. Nice timing. Silly. Oh, baby, lands the second oh, one as well. Yeah. Assault, last player left. Will manage to find a kill. Will keep the spawns in hands for his teammates. But, oh, Clay, just unfortunate timing there. Cut to ribbons as immediacy. As the push still working out for NYSL. Asim just doing what he can to go forward. 10 seconds remaining on this point. And it was a good hold from LAG. A decent amount of effort on the break. But still, relatively even Stevens as we go into this next hard point. Chance underneath floating tank by these... Crash barrels, where the hell is in those? Just like lights and stuff, those are weird bits of metal. Play, no problem finding kills from atop it. Maybe just a, a scrapyard warehouse, maybe extra tank car, whatever it's gonna be. Clayster clearly is oh, no. working and well, oh, that's maybe okay. not so much. No idea how he just survived the nade from himself, but no me gusto. You got assault from up top, able to Ooh. pick up two. His teammates are there for the clearance. Dom Khan, last on the hill, just gets wiped away. Clean break coming through from the Gorillas. And again, just a, a very back and forth game, in all honesty. Gorillas obviously with some fight in them, and well, they should be able to take the lead, maybe with the final 20 seconds. I don't know if New York's gonna overcommit and start sliding out of green. Nice work from Vivid there. You saw him jump up to that top spot. Seem not able to win the fights in mid. LAG looking fine. Max, sweet moves, but Assault even better. Diamati. Diamond about to find a bit of trouble there. Apathy once again, keeping the spree going. Apathy did a nice bit of work there to pop off. 14 and 6 overall for Apathy. And again, I've heard many players time and time again say that Apathy, when he goes off for this squad, when he goes big, oh, sorry, I was assault. 14 and 6. Apathy 7 and 9. Still going fine, but when he's going huge, when App's going off, LAG are near untouchable. I mean, you say that when App's going off, but as far as the SMG battles go, you have a scene that has just been feasting on the gorillas so far 17 kills in this game and keep in mind in that first hard point he dropped what 34 35 kills something along those lines so he has been a menace in the hard points admittedly though not to too much avail inside this p5 hill it has been the gorilla set up with the control even when assault falls Ooh. out of the hill just look at the positioning you got vivid with the spawn kills you got a body inside the point and you get your ar's top cat new york they're dealing with the spawn trap and right now they are feeling the pressure oh vivid that was disgusting on the push from the rear he managed to find the three i was just waiting for him to blow up and he does hard for apathy to pop off when uh, viv is finding literally every kill on the map right now but that's what you like to see still next hard points up max to slow these players down it was decent kills but again slow in the approach now friend where that's the job from lag trying to force that game five again this is match point and ysl so they can't quite find any more there. It's going to be three down now. Apathy trying to find a few before this gets out of hand. And that's that. On spawn now is going to be LAG. A decent chunk of time to be grabbed here from NYSL chance. It's a 2-2 two -two split. Again, looking towards that top side of the map. Looking towards the next hard point. And this has honestly just been destruction on P1. New York subliners. That's the, the main factor as to why, honestly, that they're still in this game. It seemed a big reason why off the rip he was making the routes. And even on the break for this one. We'll see the patience that he had, but Rotation's thinking about coming through. You see number eight on the minimap. Apathy's already spawned out. Well, Assault's going to join him, and more importantly, Clayster is making the reads. He knows where the spawns are coming from. His teammates are trying to hunt down Vivid. Maybe successful. Vivid's trying to pick up the big two. Mac gets the trade, though, but you see Clayster actually fall on the top side, and, well, now how the tables have turned, it's Mac that is being hunted by the Gorillas. Did Mac find a three-piece from this rear position? We'll find out in just a moment. It seems coming to back him up. Streak's going to be there to really help out, and this is a slow and steady approach. Going to force those players either inside or to their graves. The artillery does land. It forces them in, gives the time now to push forward. A scene from the rear. Nice bit of work. Clay finds two on the front line. Still alive. That's going to be a clean set of kills. All four down. LAG now on spawn. A great push from NYSL. It's something super interesting about that. You saw the ping placement from Asim. He actually let the player live on the back of the radar truck. And if I had to guess, he's calling out to his teammates. You guys can flood in the hill. Just hit the back. I'm not bombing that part. And well, they take full advantage of it. Right now, Gorillas, though, just trying to trap the players on the subliners into P2. And well, so far, so good. But now this is the time. No one can afford to die for the next few seconds or else you're going to spawn out. That's why Apathy's playing it patient. Now the kills come through. Now New York is going to be the team spawning away. This is where Gorillas want to try to lock down, get that full 60, and take the lead back over. A full 60 would be tremendous for them right now, Clay. 
It's a couple of players slip by, gives the information. A seam now in the rear. And he makes his way forward. He does. Good shots into assault. Little bit of help from his friends. Now all silly in the back. Goes down as well. Vivid holds the front line. Finds two. One more bullet would have got it done. And it does. Vivid now going to find Clay as well. Huge plays from Vivid. It's 24 and 20. The spawn's there in the back though for NYSL. It's on to Silly. What can he get done with the QBZ at that range? Not a whole lot. Diamond Con overwhelms him. You've got a seam on the left-hand side as well. Pushing forward with Mac. And man, it is back and forth so tight between these two teams. The lead not able to change hands just yet. But finally, NYSL on the point, able to flush a few more players out, but you've still got Assault Chance in the back line, able to maybe deal some damage and get a little chunk of time. It's not ideal for spawns for next, but there we go. LAG still on the right-hand side of the map. It's going to be a close contest spawn, and oh my, Clay's just been gifted a, a gifted there. He's going to be able to get players? Nah, drops in, it drops instead. Unbelievable stuff, though, Chance. Oh, NYSL just about taking the lead. Talk about smart plays, though. We've given a seam credit. Vivid making the big plays as well. Even forces out the team kill, but he just caused so many problems. New York had no idea where to look, and Vivid times the gunfight perfectly. You talk about the patience. You talk about playing with your teams. That's exactly what you want to see out of the young man. Well, for Gorillas, back inside of trash, there has been split spawns on split spawns. Big plays from both sides in such a scrappy game. We got a battle on our hands, and well, Asim taking his turn, trying to make something happen from up top. He gets dealt with, and well, you get the next SMG to take his turn. Ridiculous game <laughs> we have on our hands so far, Miles. Insane stuff. It's so back and forth. Here comes the next set of kills. Diamond Con can't quite get it done. Trades are on point. LAG not letting anything get by. They are going one for one with each other every single step of the way. However, LAG still with a nice bit of time. Great shots onto the flying Mac there. Assault cleans up the hard point. Here come a few more members of NYSL. Assault from close range. Oh, still able to get these kills. Still able to hold the line. Hard point flips wide open. And again, it is LAG in control. Chance, they are holding this one. New York now trying to break from the front. Assault's going to make his way slowly towards point. But honestly, all things considered, it's anyone's game right now. Oh, tooth and nail. Keep in mind, this was the hill last time around where, well, New York ended up getting spawn trapped. And they're going to have these back spawns, it seemed, though, trying to get that top green control. But he's going to fall. Apathy there to take him down. And, well, three players pushing in through the bs &D side of things. The Gorillas storm right in, get the clearance on the kills. And again, New York ooh, stuck in their spawn. Mac trying to open up the floodgates, alleviate some of that pressure. Maybe job well done for a moment. New York not getting spawn trapped. Nothing too oh. crazy happening so far for him. And still just a 20-point game. Back to that P1, though. Gorillas are there first. This is where New York has really run the score up, as weird as it is to say for that first hill. Gorillas need a strong defensive hold here. Well, Gorillas, this is it. Go big. They've got that top green control. They've... Lined up all across the map. 30 points now for the win for LAG. The force of the game five. Vivid continuing to put forward a ridiculous individual performance. The kills have been magnificent from him. We still have LAG in control of the point. Apathy's going to dip on out as the defense tries to line up. It's on Silly. We haven't screamed too much about him so far, but he's been very, very stable and consistent in maintaining this scoreline. Here we go. 20 points for the win. LAG, what do you got? Hold the line. Apathy's going to find these kills. Asim doing what he can and now hold the point and chance we're going back and forth again. We do have New York in control of the next hard point for now. Nades are going to be there, but here comes a break from, L from LAG. Now looking to push forward. Diamond Con on the contest once again. And oh boy, final few seconds going to be going the way of LAG. You do have a little bit of a contest for the next hard point though. Here we go, chance. If Mac dies, it's basically all over. Well, there's the first hill he's going to get. You need to clear him out. And keep in mind, his teammates flooding in through green, so they timed this pinch well. New York are oh. still going to have the fight. They never clear out Mac, and the players get through green. Hill control from the front side. They're going to be here, and Vivid gets dealt with. LAG going to spawn out. And despite the fact that they're nine points away from winning this game, New York can win it here as well. For Gorillas, either a break or a few seconds to contest time, and they get one good shot to make it happen. Oh, they're not getting enough of a chance because the seam's going wild in the middle of the map. Clay wins a big fight against Apathy. That's wild. You've got one more decent push right now for LAG. Otherwise, this series is over. Clayster, once again in mid-map. It's a five spree. Can't quite get the six. Vivid now with an opening. No, gets traded out once again, and we are still alive here for NYSL. Assault can't get anything done. It's on to Apathy. He goes down as well. Final 10 seconds. And this is unbelievable. What a hold from NYSL. It was a matter of moments before we saw this map potentially wide open. But no, New York, hold on. New York, stay alive. New York, take the series.
Take the series, and that is a GG no re. Fantastic plays coming out the end. Honestly, from both sides of uh, the you know the virtual stage that we have, Asim putting in work right from the opening rip. He opens that up with what a seven spree, able to get the artillery in the back pocket, flip the spawns, do everything. Asim, Mr. Do It All MVP at least for this series and. Even towards the end, man, he saw the play. Mac was like on the hill, completely surrounded. He found the route to get out the back alley, and of course, while well, Gorillas didn't know he was there, Mac picks up the one kill in bricks, and no one was there from the trades. They tried to just stack up on the hill and hope that they had the control, but you let Mac live, you're gonna get punished. The crumble towards the end, and I'll say that is a, a, a tough one to swallow because that is off the back of some fantastic performances, man. Salt had himself a hell of a game. Vivid was right there with him. Even quite a few, just quality breaks coming out from the Gorillas right from the start of the game, from the P2 to P3, but not giving themselves opportunities. Same thing could have been said on the checkmate control. Opportunities are one thing, execution is another. Well, at least on the latter half, subliners, execution there. Clayster, Ooh. that was too early on saying the scene for MVP. Dropped 6,500 damage, but that is just a, a hell of a duo. Subliners have. Woo, baby, what a series. NYSL certainly came to play, and oh, man, it was close. It was close chance, but not quite enough. Damage across the, across the team there, really, really well done. Clay going ham, ham. Unreal stuff, but that's that. Garrison, it is complete. The series is done. It is a 3-1 for NYSL. That was your stats. We've got our scuff play of the game coming up. It's going to be the final few moments. And we got to give credit where credit is due, man. Mac, stay in. You said it. You're like, if Mac doesn't stay alive in the back, this is over. Mac does a little bit more than stay alive. He finds those kills. He allows his teammates to come through. And here it is. Your scuff play of the game. Props to NYSL. A seems unbelievable set of two kills here. And again, Clay's big one win. Ah, oh, baby. What a map that was. And again, credit for Mac just for making the plays, but you just see the level of aggression, even on the defensive hold that Subliners had. You have all these players trying to flood in through mid, flood in through lights, but you have New York, everyone, constantly someone is there for the trades, whether it was Clayster or a seam with the follow through and just too strong on the defensive end. And again, the way that this hill started, Gorillas had two or three bodies in and around the point and Bricks control, but... They just played it maybe just a, a little bit too slow, man. They didn't jump on Matt quick enough. And they get punished for it, but hell of a game for the subliners, man. This team, anytime the game comes down to the wire, just about at least, they always have fight in them. They always have that clutch factor, whether it's a, a reverse sweep or a nail-biter finish for the hard point. Subliners, man, they're, I mean, one of the best teams to watch in the league so <laughs> far, without a doubt. Well, that's that. They complete their uh, set of Los Angeles teams. They took down the Thieves. They've taken down the Gorillas. NYSL looking fine so far. A couple more games to be played though in this run of the stage before we get to the major for them. But it's been a decent campaign throughout the groups. We look at things so far. Atlanta FaZe gave them the hands 3-1. They've still got the London Royal Ravens coming up next on the 27th and then April 3rd, Toronto Ultra. Interesting to see how this all goes down, but for NYSL, not a bad turn of events. We now look towards the Gorillas in their run of things, and it has not been as ideal. The 3-0 to Ravens was a shock, but still a chance to turn this around. Of course, Atlanta Phase will be a much tougher opponent. Toronto Ultra, we'll see how that one goes. And then on April 4th, showdown with LA Thieves to see just how the group finishes out. Chuck, what a day of games we've had so far, but we ain't done, friends. If you think Call of Duty is great at this level, wait till you see it at the Challengers level. Elite schedule on your screen, and let me tell you, friends, it has been wild to watch so far. A very big, friendly, familiar name there. Sidelines Academy, of course, coming through as the NA Women's. The Rams winning the European side of things. That's season one done. Season two, it's just around the corner. And there you go, the social soundboard pre presented by Astro. You wouldn't believe it, would you, friends, that hot tip that challenges is full of budding talent. Crackheads, if you will. I know I've said it, what, three times a broadcast today. It's not exactly accurate, but you get where I'm coming from. They're playing out of their minds. They're playing for a spot on the biggest stage that Call of Duty can give you. Right, chance, we've done it, mate. We've done it. The day is done. What an unbelievable day it has been, mate. GG's for you, GG's for me, GG's in the chat. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to throw this to a quick commercial break. When we come back, there's still plenty of calls you to talk about. We've got to interview someone from the subliners, and we've got to break everything down to the HQ at the end of the day. We will see you, friends, tomorrow.
Hello everybody and welcome to your Game Fuel Victory Spotlight. Joining me I have Asim from NYSL. They have been phenomenal and I'm loving how dominant they're looking. Asim, I've got to talk to you man because your hard point has been nuts recently. We've been loving what we're seeing from you and from the lads as well on your respawns. But the end there, I mean, Matt getting that kill in bricks, flipping everything on its axis at the end there to really clutch up and get the win. What was going on from your guys' point of view towards the end of the series there? Um, yeah, I feel like on that Garrison hard point, it, w it should have been a lot smoother and like a, a lot bigger of a lead. But um, we were just telling each other like, take deep breaths like we're screwing up these rotations let's try to clutch up and win at the end and yeah like you said mac mac went huge for us and then after that we all got super pumped and we were just um just pretty much like trying to make sure that we clutched up in that last p2 yeah i mean it looked like you really had lag sweat in there for a second didn't they? they were panicking um, yeah. and you guys were really capitalizing on it we, uh, we loved watching you guys turn that on his axis there. But I've got to talk to you about S and D, man, because, you know, I, I want to know from you how you guys felt it went. Um, are you looking at improving anything coming up against Ravens tomorrow? Um, yeah, I feel like our S&D is like, uh, it depends on our offenses. I feel like if we're really good on our offenses, we'll like start blowing teams out. Uh, I think that solely, it, it, it puts a lot of pressure on me because I'm always the first guy in, I have the bomb. And I think a lot of those rounds I was getting picked too early, so I need to slow it down sometimes, especially against a slow team like LAG. So yeah, going into tomorrow, we're gonna, I'm definitely gonna work on my, my s and I feel like we're a really strong S&D team. Sometimes we just don't show it. For sure, and I, t I totally feel you, man. And obviously, things to work on, for sure. And you guys are really sitting quite comfortably at fourth right now with uh, Chicago. So I know that you'll want to scale that, you know, that CDL points ladder mm -hmm. as a team. I know you want to try and break into the top two, I'm sure. Uh, what are you guys doing behind the scenes to work on, you know, getting there, getting to that top two spot there? Um, it's it's solely off the practice. I feel like every team it depends on your work ethic, your uh, your your mentality going into every day of practice. And we just have a bunch of young, hungry guys leading us by by Clay. And uh, I think we're just trying to prove to everyone that we are a top four team, and even possibly top two, like you said, Lottie, and try to make another run in the in the major two, and hopefully try to get to the finals because we were just short of that in stage one. Fantastic. Well, I tell you what, Asim, I want to personally thank you because you absolutely clutched my pickums today <laughs> love it and uh congratulations once again you guys really are doing a phenomenal job and i'm i'm loving seeing you guys go from strength to strength so well done Asim. i appreciate it well there you have it guys ace yourself breaks down what you guys have been seeing all day long and what a phenomenal series that we had uh, from NYSL there to end off the day. Actually, it's not going to end too too often because we're going to be going straight to a segment on the desk there with myself and Nameless. We'll break down everything that we saw from today and what we're expecting heading into tomorrow. So we'll see you guys right after this.
They say credit belongs to the man in the arena who spends himself in a worthy cause. The glory is reserved for the few. Who no matter what, answer the call to enter the arena. It echoes out, reverberating across the globe. The only acts to reach the bold, never the timid. The call delivers victory to the deserving and rewards the devoted. For when your time comes, there is only one option. Enter the arena. Fight for the call. Hello, our wonderful, beautiful Call of Duty League fam. Here are the results from today. This is our US Army schedule. We had London Royal Ravens taking on LA Thieves and they take them down three to one. Big stuff from Paul X and the rest of the lads. They're really coming together as a roster. And then to seal the deal today, we had NYSL taking on LAG and they managed to do the same. Look at that, two, three, and ones today. Uh, big stuff from New York Subliners, big stuff from Mac, and we got our Astro Social soundboard here from the London Royal Ravens. We beat Gorillas last week and Thieves today. Guess we know what the L in L stands for. Oh my God. <laughs> they have been on point. Oh, oh, hit him where it hurts, nameless. Hit him where it hurts, man. The um, I must say, the social media from all of our all of our teams here is just amazing. It is chef's kiss. We absolutely love keeping up with all of that on Twitter. Uh, absolutely epic. Well, I'll tell you what, talking about the L in LA Thieves, where did they go from here, nameless, man? What have they got to do to really, I don't know, turn things around here? mistakes today uh, you look at the search and destroy it was just an absolute frenzy they did not know what was going on in multiple rounds they could have gotten that bomb down in that last you know round where they had numbers and they lost to Shawnee up top in that window getting that two-piece that was unacceptable in my eyes that's something they're gonna go back watch the film and be like we have to just from top to bottom change up our search and destroy their approach to the game in the beginning of the rounds it works it's fine it's just those mid round when they try to make those adjustments, it doesn't work out. They're not decisive. There was three rounds in a row where they could have planted it and they didn't. So search and destroy, not good. In the hard point, especially on that game four hard point, what we saw to them wasn't great. They could have, you know, rotated and set up on P2. Instead, they decide to send two players to hit P1. They end up dying and they spawn out, which just puts them more in a hole. Now that is like day one stuff that you need to know for hardpoint and this is such a good team that's supposed to be a contender they know these things in the back of their mind they're just outplaying themselves so yeah they got to go back and, and figure it out for sure the film will tell all in this series the film will tell all. we we see all here in the call of duty league i mean it's a it's a major shame because i feel like that you know there's been switch ups in the league and we've seen rookies come on board and really make a huge difference but right now for this team it's not actually the people on the team that are the problem it's the team itself and and what they're actually doing the overall play style that they're they're producing here so i'm excited to see what they switch up uh, coming out of that match and what they're going to be focusing on but we do have our schedule here for you guys presented by the u.s army for saturday so nysl start your day this time instead of end it against the london royal ravens that is going to be a battle there our game field marquee match right bang in the middle of the day atlanta face taking on la thieves what is this gonna like what is this gonna do for la thieves right now and their confidence yeah. um this this is gonna be a tough one because they need time to regain uh, and readjust and that will be that'll be rough and then rounding off saturday we've got ultra taking on lag here it's uh it's the perp on the screen right there um it's gonna be it's gonna be a good one um but i I want to know more about Ravens from your point of view, uh, Namus, because Ravens obviously two two in a row now, man, going from zero, the big donut, to two in a row. But can they get the third? What what's the key, do you think, to this third victory against NYC? Yeah, one, I gotta give a shout out to the Ravens, man. That's a huge turnaround going into stage two. Paul X, he's just that disciplined AR, and what we were wanting him to do for the squad, he's done it, man. So we gotta give him a shout out. And the rest of these guys for stepping up. Zed coming in late into this game. He's been playing phenomenal. And then you look at Dylan. On that first map, he was lighting it up, man. That's what you wanted. You got an AR on the team now and you get Dylan going. It's exactly what you need if you're the Ravens. But with all that being said, there have been 11 hard points this season that have been within 10 points. 
Two of them were in this series, right, right here that we saw versus the LA Thieves. So obviously the hard points, a little bit too close for comfort. We saw that they had a huge lead on map number one. They made a huge error in overexerting themselves, pushing that P1 over and over again. They should have just given it up, cut their losses, rotated and set up. And that's what I wanna see them improve on going into the series versus New York. We saw how good ASIM can be, how good clay is in the final moments of maps so you're not gonna be able to make those mistakes versus new york a team that has been improving with every single match gosh name us you're good man thank you you're very good at Appreciate what you do it. stats overall round Shout out tyler for that advice tyler gave me that stat man just <laughs> fantastic absolutely love it uh, but i tell you what i also love is looking ahead and that is the road to the major because that's what we're playing for here right i say we as if i'm playing i kind of am in my head with along with all of our teams here uh, but we do have our group a here and this is what is kind of going to be going down this is the schedule for all of our 12 teams that we're going to be showing you here and you know they've got a big thing coming up they've got the next home series the lag home series and really that is going to pave the way for the seeding for the major here um Nameless, just looking at really what we've got on the board here, who do you think is in the danger zone? Who's in dangerous water heading into the next major? I mean, it's Toronto and Gorillas. I mean, you look at both of those teams and whoever loses the matchup against each other, like that is going to be a, just a dire match right there. They're both 0-2 right now. They're both playing each other in their next game. So whoever loses that match is in a terrible spot because if you look at both of them, I mean, they have Ravens and Subliners for Ultra left, and then you have FaZe and LA Thieves. Like, those could be tough matches. So, yeah, that's a big one. Yeah. They're, they're definitely going to be tough matches. And talking about tough matches, we've got plenty more. we got Group B to look at. Here's the road to Major for Group B and exactly what they're going to have coming their way heading towards that. Now, obviously, Dallas Empire in a pretty good shape here heading into this next Major. Um, but they do have quite a few things that's standing in their way. And then we got Optic, which is kind of it's kind of difficult watching Optic oh and their goodness. journey so far. It's been so up and down, man. Talk to me. What, what are you seeing there? Group Bravo is stacked, man. I haven't seen the group separated like this after we've seen <laughs> yeah. you know a look at most of the teams now in stage two and all these teams are hitting their stride right now mutineers have been improving uh outside of optic obviously but we know optic will bounce back empire legion rocker surge like these are all teams that you know are so dangerous so this group is just looking absolutely disgusting i looked at the remaining matches and i realized everybody's remaining schedule is tough in this group so yeah that's gonna be wild yeah they really are, and you can kind of see like the winter loss ratio on all of it. It's all a bit all over the place currently. It's like they're all working out where they stack up against each other, and obviously the changes that have come in. So I'm, I'm excited to see that map kind of even out a little bit. Now we have cemented roles on some of the rosters yeah. in Group B as well, which will be really interesting. Uh, but i tell you what, something else that's very interesting, Nameless, that I have uh, coming your way bro, that? that I want you to see is um, it was really interesting hearing you actually casting some, uh, some eights the other day. That was so uh, interesting, getting your take on the you eights. Gotta think, Do you remember that? You gotta that? think it's gonna be a good series. I mean, wow, yeah. it was mind blowing, seriously. Well, if, if, you, if you don't remember that, and if you guys at home haven't seen him casting eights, check, check this out. I am mind blown. That was a mind blown <laughs> performance from the blue team. Or, I mean, the red team. Sorry. That was mind blown. They were unable to string any kills together. The blue team is playing horrible. So, for the red team, mind blown performance. They're going to keep it up. <laughs> They're just slaying, study. I love it. <laughs> oh my god. That is just absolutely amazing. We've got <laughs> Astro Social Soundboard to go alongside this. And wow, mind blown. I love it. <laughs> and methods. And it's always good to have you. Your expertise is always appreciated. Dude, this is this is just absolutely incredible. What did you think when you saw that? Uh, it was hilarious. Time? I actually joined uh, their team. He DM'd me the team speak. <laughs> Yesterday, I joined up in there, and we were having fun on his show, man. Zoom has been killing it with the content, as well as Zen, man. I love both those guys, and it's been hilarious, dude. I think it's great. It is. It's content away from content. I absolutely love it. I can't get enough of this Italian duo. Hopefully seeing more of their casting and their uh, incredible impression abilities soon. Uh, but thank you guys so much uh, for joining us. It's been a wonderful day of Call of Duty League. We've got plenty more this weekend. Don't worry, we're not going anywhere. Tomorrow we'll be back 3 p.m. Eastern, 12 Pacific, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, but until then, it's a good night, and we'll see you tomorrow. Dylan, oh, 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 over the top, not a single <laughs> given. London has burst into life. Shawnee up top, that is a force free for him. There's number five. Digging you higher, yeah, the lights getting brighter. Out of control, I'm ready to move, I'm ready to go, cause I'm the groove.
Ravens looking to cement themselves as the kings of Europe. The New York Subliners. This is basically a brand new roster for the Subliners. All things have changed, and here we go. Clay once again comes up clutch. He is the true veteran. Diamond Con, oh, keeping this run going. Asim has really been having himself a hell of a series. Mac popping up in the feed. Shout out to Mac, that was a killer two feet. And a fantastic end to the round there for New York.